good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Primecast. I am back from Evo. One of our guests is back from Evo, and we are currently swimming in a absolute sea of Comic-Con news as well as some other fun stuff. So we are going to get right to the mix. As always, if you enjoy the Primecast, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to keep up to date with us, be sure to hit that subscribe button over on Twitch or hit the follow button over, uh, well, the subscribe button over on YouTube and the follow button over on Twitch. Like we do this every couple weeks. That way, you know, we don't burn ourselves out or wind up getting stagnant with the news. And it's been a lot of fun so far. So without any further ado, let's get my wonderful co-host up on here, Hoarder Gamer. What's going on, Hoarder? How you doing? I'm good, Jay. I'm actually back from Devo, uh, the band, uh, the proto-punk <laughs> band from the 80s. <laughs> did, did, did they bring the house down? Did they? Uh, I, I, I'm just kidding. I didn't want to feel left out. So I was <laughs> like, oh, I got back from Devo. Yes, okay. All right. Uh, our two guests tonight, uh, you have seen them before. You love them, you hate them. I don't care, I love them, so that's why they're here. Make peace with it. And that is Lionheart, and none Stop. other. Put your damn camera on Fudge Grande. Hello, boys. How y'all doing? Everything's good. Doing? Uh, you know, living the dream, living the dream. Gonna burn this building down. Uh, you know, just uh. <laughs> Well, not even 30 seconds in and already got a violation. Cool. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what I built it, it's safe, it's mine, and it's cold. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'll actually take that because personally, like I gotta send my car into the shop. Uh I don't have any AC. <gasps> I got into what? my car today and I read something I'd never seen before on my dashboard. A hundred degrees. <laughs> oh. like, no, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have uh, to that's crazy. This. <laughs> but all right, let's go around the table. Uh, Lion, what have you been playing, or what is something cool that has happened to you? And no, hanging out with me at Evo, watching me cry does not count. Ah! <laughs> uh, what I've been playing outside of the obvious fighting game, Destiny, here and there, I've been playing a lot of Dave the Diver. I think I told you before, and Great a few game. others. But Dave the Diver is such an addicting game. Yeah. There's just so much to do. And something cool that, besides Evo. Mm, uh, honestly, the only thing I can really think of is uh, this beautiful thing right here. I showed you earlier, but I'm uh, joining the gang. Oh, wow. But I'm also joining with this extremely sick artwork. No, the artwork is nice, but uh, leverless. You know? yeah, so you know, keep making the uh, the poop face there, Jay. Like, is, is it that bad? <laughs> so imagine an arcade stick, but instead of moving with a arcade stick, you're moving with a keyboard. Hold hold it up again. Hold it up again. <clears throat> Clearly, these aren't working. What? Yeah. All right. So see like... that big ass button down at the bottom? Oh, there's no joystick. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that big ass button down at the bottom I... is the up button. I just assumed there was a joystick. Yeah, you so like you would, like, you would, uh, how would I do this? Yeah, like this is like your left, down, right, and then your jump button. Wow. Your traditional, you know, a bit different from like a traditional stick. You know what I'm saying? Who hurt you? Hey, man, listen, I'm what, trying no, to, no, you know, I'm trying to try something wait, new. Wait, hold on, hold on. I can actually answer that question because I saw it last night. Saki oh. Sakura. <laughs> She Wait, gave no. him the ass whooping of a lifetime. What do you mean? I beat her. It was Not 15. When I was watching. It was 15 to 8. When I was watching, she was thoroughly handing you your ass. Mm -mm. Oh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I was in that dog ass. All right. What, what were you doing in my dog's ass? No. no not like. <laughs> it's a figure. I, Listen, stop. You know what I'm talking about. You got to know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Saki knows what I'm talking about. But anyway, yeah, like okay, that's I'm not gonna let Lion get you, buddy. You're fine. <laughs> that's something that I'd say is cool outside of Evo is just finally getting, you know, uh, something that's good like that and really trying to learn something new, keep the spark alive. And how about you, Fudge? I I kind of peeked in on your stream today while I was working. Uh how's XCOM treating you? Uh well, 
since I fired it up last night, I'm at like the last mission, um, for which I'm woefully underprepared. Mm -hmm. uh, it's whooping my ass because all my good, strong people getting good, strong mind controlled and shooting me in my butt. <laughs> and I've been playing a, a lot of different stuff recently. Uh, I finally went back and played the Callisto Protocols DLC. Mm. How is that? I never touched it. Don't. Okay then. Don't. Uh, Don't. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like Walmart Dead Space. Uh, <laughs> and if the main game had a bad ending, playing the DLC just further uh, further tells you that their writing team should be dragged into the street and well. Marie, Marie Antoinette. Uh, <laughs> it, is, it is so bad. Uh, that is a damn shame, being that it's supposed to be the original Dead Space team. Like you it and me sure were really is. looking forward to this game, and God, and it, the Dead Space remake is excellent. It, it's no, awesome. the fuck, what? No, it's not. You know what? the Dead Space, Dead Space no. remake? They took everything out of the original, removed the soul, and said, "Here, have our EA branded bullshit." I like it. I'm sorry. It looked cool to me. It's god awful. Okay. You, you and me are going to have to sit aside and talk about that one at some point because I don't notice a ton of differences. Okay, so here's the thing. Th this is my stance on the whole remaking Dead Space thing. Uh -huh. You could have just reskinned it in high def and updated, like, you know, the textures to make it look pretty and next gen. You could have left the rest of it alone. You didn't need to tweak with the story. You didn't need to modify anything. And you if didn't my need to make that Isaac talk. No, you didn't. And if my opinion isn't good enough, go look at their numbers. Oh no, no. I mean look, they're so wishy-washy on whether or not they're even gonna do a sequel because of how it did. I thought they already really? said like it wasn't gonna happen. That's why I say they're being wishy-washy because they're like, eh, probably not gonna happen. But maybe. So I'm gonna say right now, I don't think that's based on the uh, purely based on the quality of the game. I think nope. that what we're seeing a lot with social media is people like, oh, I want this game. I'm dying for this game. I have to have this game. Game comes out, sells terribly. Mirror's mm -hmm. Edge sequel. Everyone was begging for a sequel to Mirror's Edge. It came out, no one bought it. No one. And if you want another example, Alan Wake 2 came out. Still hasn't made back its budget. Even with DLC sales. Well, that's rough. And that game was a long rough. time coming from Remedy. Yeah, and it's a pretty awesome experience. It's, it's an insane. incredible game. Yeah, but, it's an insane experience. <laughs> you know, you know, Remedy sold oodles with control, but if you look at Alan Wake, people are like, what is that? Your weapon's a flashlight? Eh. Wasn't that always the shtick with Alan? Yeah, it was the, yeah. it was the shtick. It's very but, Stephen King. I don't know why people yeah. would have a problem with it, you know? Well, here's the thing. A lot of people who never played the originals played Control, and said, ooh, this is going to be like Control. And then they got it, and it's like, no, no, it's not. Not control at all. It's kind of one of a kind, I got to yeah. say. Yeah. 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 yeah, if in that universe you have a superhero, you're it in Control. Yeah. Yeah. I never did finish Control, but, like, the little... I think I stopped playing it because I just got horrifically lost, and then I put it down and picked it up, like, two months later. I don't love the map. <laughs> I had no idea where I was and just said, screw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're really not supposed to love the map. It's meant to be confusing. Even yeah, I had to, but... like... E dude, even I had to go look up where I was supposed to go for two different sections of that game. Because it's There's... like, huh? You gotta look at, like, you know what... You know, sometimes you make things too realistic or, like, too, like, intense and stuff, and then you kind of lose the game nature of it. It's hard to explain it. But, yeah. like, uh, it's something I've definitely seen with, like, um, Rockstar games, like oh, yeah. uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, and, like, sometimes you just need to gamify it a bit more, if that makes sense. Hey, you know, it does. Yeah. But, you know, some things I would never really had an issue with, uh, like, Red Dead 2. The only the only part of it that ever felt like a slog was the intro sequence when you're literally mm. slogging through the snow. And it felt like it would never end. But once you're out of it, everything's fun. You know? I'll take your word for it because I never got past the intro. <laughs> yeah, no, oh. the, the, the intro is like half hour, 45 minutes of why am I doing this? Uh, yeah. Why? I'm looking forward to playing it. I still haven't turned it on. Oh, yeah, you got it. I felt so the good. exact same way with uh, what? Rise of the Ronin, the thing Team Ninja came out. It was basically an open world Neo. You know, I didn't play it. You didn't miss much. 
Yeah, because like not. I played it and I felt like I was on a treadmill looking at a pizza, just going, I'm never going to get there. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, that's that's really how Oof. it felt. Yeah. Footlock is really good. If you have Game Pass, I highly recommend it. Which Flint? one? Flint Footlock uh, Siege of Dawn. Mm. I do have Game Pass. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah, for eight whole American dollars, you can try out a new game called Pilgrim. It's being made by a team of two dudes. It's a very lethal company-esque, except it's a dungeon crawler. Hmm. And the entire shtick is that you crawl through dungeons to make money, to keep crawling through dungeons, to find crystal fuel cells for your wagon, to get to the end of a road so that you can launch a pigeon from the city. A pigeon. It's, a it pigeon, sounds a pigeon with a message. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's it, interesting. It's a completely ludicrous sounding game, huh. but for eight bucks, I got four and a half hours of play out of it, and that's because there's only about four and a half hours of game available yet because they're still building the dang thing. Mm. Then Marvel, definitely, uh, mm -hmm. go ahead. I'll release it. Early access helps you Maybe fund your takes, project. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's Steam, man. It's the Wild West out there with early access products. Yeah, but some of them are actually diamonds in the rough. I mean, I've gotten a forty dollars early access game that I absolutely hated, and then I've gotten a five dollars, eight dollars early access game that I've had hours and hours of fun with. Tell me about it. Body cam, that shooter, that realistic shooter that everyone kept talking about for a bit. I tried it; it was horrible, and I like just about every shooter out right now. Didn't and... they only have like an arena set up for yes. it? Like you? Okay, so I'm gonna give you a, a one to look out for. Um, it's called Unrecord. Whereas, That's what it... Okay, so body cam is like the, the PvP version of it. Unrecord is a body cam uh, perspective campaign. Oh, okay. So it's like a single-player campaign versus a, a PvP box arena where you all just dumpster each other every three seconds. Yeah, Unrecord is in my wish list. five dollars I ever spent, Vampire Survivors. That game is awesome. I yeah. also have that. Yeah, bullet hell. It makes everybody happy. But all right, uh, Hoarder, what have yes. you been playing, or what is something cool that happened to you? Ah, so I've been playing some of the First Descendants, and we'll be getting to that a little bit later. Uh, and I've also been playing uh, some of uh, Marvel Rivals, and uh, we'll be getting to that as a whole pretty later, uh, 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 a little bit later, I believe. But mm -hmm. uh, the game is fun. I've been enjoying it. And uh, Jeff the Shark is absolutely adorable. <laughs> One of the most uh, surprising Avengers to show up in the game. And, uh, oh, my God, you have, like, these little bubbles you put out to heal. Or, and you also do, like, a healing water spray. It is so good. There's a thing where you actually go into the ground, and it, he starts doing the little Jaws theme in his voice. It's amazing. <laughs> and then his ultimate is like that, except it's a larger fin, a thing of water, and you basically eat everything in the area. Left trigger is to spit out your friends. Right trigger is to spit out your enemies. You can spit them off the map. It's a <laughs> really cool ability. But yeah, I well, very I'm much like it. For this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess it's my turn. Uh, Gaming-wise, you know, usual stuff. Learning some new things in Mortal Kombat. Learning a brand new character in Tekken. Uh, playing Destiny, playing First Descendant, getting frustrated at the drop rate, and then going and playing something else. Um, yeah, you know, the usual routine. However, I did have something really cool happen yesterday at work. So it's uh, no secret. I won't say who I work for, but it's no secret. I sell beds for a living. And I had to go work a location. I am not a fan of working. And an hour before closing... Bill Nye walked in. Oh, I saw the picture, but I didn't know where. Okay. Yeah. So of that, that was at fame. work. Huh? Yeah. Of science guy fame. Yes. Yes, indeed. So, um, like, I tried to play it off as best I could, but once I got confirmation that, yeah, it was him, it was just like, it, it, it's an honor to meet you, sir. Oh, my God. Like, I, I definitely fanboyed a little bit, but, like, who else can say that they sold Bill Nye the science guy at bed? Like, please tell me he was nice. Oh, he was insanely nice. Awesome, very cool. Much more of a potty mouth than I thought. 
<laughs> but incredibly nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dude, it's it's all those like uh, you know from childhood TV personalities that are always so wholesome that have the worst potty mouth. Like you remember Bob Saget? Yes. Oh yeah. my God, his standup was crazy. Yeah. Now all the kids growing up saw him as the dad on that show, and all of a sudden they get old enough to look back at his old standup routines. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, they just, I was never fooled. Let's put it that way. <laughs> there's there's no way somebody is that nice. And like I, I thought that about Bill Nye as well. But I also remember some of the stuff that he did just a couple years back where he essentially just took the kid gloves off. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, I remembered all of that. And uh, meeting him in person, he, he did not disappoint. So <laughs> none of it was directed at me, which is a big plus. But it's just... Yeah. What what's that what what's that fucking thing over there? And I'm just like oh. <laughs> <laughs> is your yeah, mother with that, that mouth science guy? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Enjoy hell, sewer mouth. <laughs> one one of the uh, most ridiculous things I came up with uh, anyone knows the British actor Bill Nighy? He was yeah. actually in uh, um uh, the sequel to uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, and uh, so yeah, I, okay. I came up with Bill Nighy, the science guy. He. I, I remember having to do that quite a few times. Of like, <laughs> oh, it's Bill Nye. Which one? A science guy, not underworld mob boss. <laughs> 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 or for us Destiny guys, we all know him as Dad, because Dad is dead. And yeah, Bill Bill Nighy was the. Uh, he was the speaker. So, like... Oh, you're right! Us Destiny people are very acquainted with him. Oh, yeah. But, all right. Moving on to the first subject of the night. It's time for us to whip out our double Ds. Okay. But I have no Destiny news, so only Hoarder will be exposing himself today. <laughs> Get ready for the exposing. Okay, no. Um, I was going to say expose, but that's a totally different meaning. Okay, um, so we're going to start with Diablo 4. And August 6th is the beginning of Season 5 of Diablo 4. So that's, a lot of people are excited about that. Now, what happened is Riker happens to do a video, like every Saturday, covering Diablo and a number of other games. And he's one of the biggest names in the uh, Diablo community. A super nice guy, uh, gives a lot of great information, has this incredibly low voice, it, it, really cool. Anyway, he did a video and he saw something interesting that some other people in the community were talking about. They're going to take the cap, level cap, from 100 and possibly take it down to 60. Why? So I, I I have an an idea. That's something that was not posited during the video, but I do have an idea as to why. Um, so they're taking the level cap apparently and moving it from 100 to 60. And some of the things that bear this out, the um, season five PTR apparently showed that when you get potions, they're all going to be at 10 levels now. So it's level 10, level 20, level 30, 40, 50, 60, taking you up to your last potion that you get at level 60. Then there was other information saying that at max level, um, you need to have 1,000 armor, and it said at max level 60. So every, right now it looks like that's how it's going to be, and that Paragon will be counted separately like in Diablo 3. Let me ask you a technical question. Go ahead. Did they bring Diablo back yet? Uh, not yet. I would guess that's the second or third expansion. Uh, we get um, Hatred. So um, Mephisto is in the uh, expansion. No, sir. I don't like it. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> don't shoot the messenger. Okay. Um, so then there's that information there and then it's the idea of um basically a stat squish so basically so the way it looks from people talking about it 
is they're doing this because the numbers were just getting way too high. The power levels were going way too high. And these changes could be good, but they're also a bit worrisome from just about everyone talking about them as well. So we kind of have to see exactly how this is going to go. Um, although we found out that uh, through Adam Fletcher and uh, one of the other devs, there's some amazing changes coming to Uniques. And it sounds like there are going to possibly be some crazy changes, that almost like broken things they're going to talk about. That's going to happen on August 1st. They're going to have a, um, a campfire chat, I believe is what they call it. So that's something you kind of need to look about or look at. If, as you were wondering why we're going from 100 to 60, I would guess, okay, and I'm going to do this uh, in, in, the, in the tone of British, okay? Um, like casuals, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so basically, <laughs> I'm thinking that a lot of the people that play are casuals, right? So every season, yeah, maybe they are playing. My guess is they stop around the 50 to 60 mark. I'm guessing the large percentage of players for seasons aren't hitting 100. And they realized that and they wanted to make a change, just like they made a change to leveling up from one to 50 being much quicker. That's my thought. Would make sense. Uh, so then that's pretty much the big Diablo news, you know, outside of the expansion coming out, uh, Vessel of Hatred, October 8th, for the first Descendant. Uh, right now, it looks like that is going to be dropping the first big update. Uh, dropping on um, July 31st instead of August 1st. It's going to have an ultimate Velby. So people that love the game, uh, love certain characters, and they love ultimates, especially the hardcore players. So people are looking forward to Velby. There's going to be a new Colossus that's a giant, uh, almost kaiju-like boss called Gluttony. He's going to be showing up. There's a number of new cosmetic outfits that people are excited about. And they are actually working on um, uh, certain like um, drop rates and things, but I don't know exactly as to what way. Uh, they are just making a number of changes. And then that's just sort of the beginning. Late August is more story, everybody. So we're actually already going to get more story and stuff like that going on. Uh, we're actually going to get... Um, oh, another, uh, I forgot about this, um, August 31st, also a new descendant, Luna. She's based on music, so it's supposed to be kind of like a rhythm game type of thing, a mu music rhythm thing for her to do some of her attacks and stuff. So I, I'm looking forward to that. Nice. And uh, any, any anything anyone wants to say about First Descendant? I'm still kind of slogging my way through the story. Um because I have definitely uh, been that person of like, oh, wait, there's a drop here that goes to another descendant. I'm going to keep playing this mission until I get it. Me too. Yes. And then I, um, an hour goes by, I get frustrated and I turn it off. <laughs> well, you know how you upgrade an ultimate weapon, right? What's that? You know how you upgrade an ultimate weapon, right? I do not actually. Okay, so the, each ultimate weapon has a really unique feature to it. To upgrade that feature up to four levels, you have to have another of that exact same ultimate weapon. So you have to farm the separate pieces of that ultimate weapon three times beyond the one that you already have that you're building, and that's how you do that. That is a lot of grinding. However, they've made that better. So one thing, big change they have in a patch I forget if this patch is out now already or if it's coming out on August 31st. But uh, now instead of five minutes to wait to do these outposts, which have insanely cool drops, uh -huh. it's now only one minute. So as soon as you're done, in one minute, you're able to do those uh, outposts again. So that, that was a huge thing. Because otherwise you waited five minutes between attempts and, yeah. Fudge, what is happening? No grindy. Holy That's a bit much. Like, yeah, but I mean, Warframe has grinds, grinds too. Me. I mean, you know, it's kind of the beast. And, you know, uh, dude, listen, 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 listen. I understand that 
the weekend love child of Destiny and Warframe is the like hot flavor of the month right now. But I swear to God, I would rather eat a tin of Sir Strumming opened directly into my waiting mouth, brine and all, than tell anyone to submit themselves to this kind of gameplay. Jesus Christ. Why do people do this to themselves? Why? Do you do, do you I do you have to ask? Them, I'm you... not done ranting. I'm sorry. <laughs> continue. Continue you rant. Said, you just said you gotta you gotta get the ultimate weapon and to upgrade the ultimate weapon, you gotta grind out another ultimate weapon, and you can do that three more times. Why? Why not just go to like the circus? and beg the freak show section for their best bed of glass and just belly flop onto it from a 10-foot height. <laughs> fun. That sounds more entertaining, and at least you'll get something out of it. Trauma, which clearly I would get out of trying to grind out this game. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh no. It's so much. For anyone in the audience wondering why I bring him onto the show, now you know why. Oh, so you can make me relive my pain? Ugh. Because your pain is comedy gold. <laughs> you played Warframe, right? You're, you uh, played some Warframe? No, no I uh, No, I tried to get him on Destiny, and he ultimately quit that because even that was too grindy for him. Okay, mm. listen, 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 listen. Before you tried to get me on Destiny, I played Destiny. But you know where I stopped playing Destiny? When the game concluded... The when the game the concluded. The but game if you've got to grind <laughs> to do each consecutive conclusion of the game, then it's no longer fun to me. You understand? I I don't I don't want to have to sell my soul to get to the next part of the story. Why do you think I haven't bought in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3? I'm not paying $70. For a four-hour campaign, when all they're charging me for is the multiplayer experience. Do you understand me? I know what that campaign is. It's just multiplayer maps with little bits of story wrapped in. But I don't want to sell my soul to a game to enjoy it. Warframe, Destiny, The Last Descendant, Mother of God. Never again. I'm free, I tell you. Free. For now, wait till Transformers Reactivate comes out. There's there's something that'll grab you, oh, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, my sweet summer child. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> cars that turn into robots are going to drag me in. You've got another thing coming. I was over cars that turned into robots the minute I started to have to drive a car. Hey, there's the jets, too. Fragility. And guns and tanks and... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm done. Carry on. I think I need a drink. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, well, I guess we'll say a little bit about Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Um, so yeah. season two finally came out with Mrs. Freeze. And you can spend $10 and get Mrs. Freeze right away, or you can earn her. Now, I'll be honest here, I didn't get as much time with it as I wanted. I only got to level, like, I think five or six of 25 which you have to get to to unlock Mrs. Freeze without purchasing her. But one thing I really do like is that they altered the whole concept of what you do this season. So once you get to that level, then you actually uh, uh, basically find Mrs. Freeze, and then you are basically taking her with your team to face off against Brainiac. So I was worried that every single season – it was going to be someone you're rescuing from Brainiac, so you have to go and do that fight before you even unlock the new character. This is different. You actually get her first, and apparently she has a cinema and some missions and stuff. I don't know exactly. The missions might be similar to what we've done. I honestly don't know yet, um, but i you know, looking forward to play as her. I heard her traversal is absolutely amazing. And, uh, I did see her traversal. Yeah, that did look good. Yeah, so like uh, I'm definitely still working on trying to get her. The new Winter Wonderland with everything frozen is pretty cool. One of the things that uh, happens is tanks will actually tip over and stuff. 
So, because they're not used to the ice, I guess. Uh, and that's pretty wild. You're seeing that happen and you're like, what in the hell just happened? Um, but yeah, so far I'm having fun with it. There's supposed to be another uh, surprise uh, person that shows up and I don't know that yet. Uh, but yeah, apparently at some point soon we're going to start finding members of the Justice League because we see Flash in a cinema that opens up the uh, game or the uh, season. Yeah, I remember hearing, uh, and I think it was uh, Paul Tassi, uh, put out an article about it that apparently, like, they're just they're kind of backpedaling on the story a little bit and going like, "Oh no, the Justice League is alive after all," and now it's like you got to go save them instead of like you know just doing wave after wave after wave of Brainiac fights. So yeah, so I'm interested in seeing it. Uh, I, I to me, it's cool enough to just come check out some of those weapons fight the Brainiac version they have again, get a little bit more story. But I do like that they altered it where now you get to find her, team up with her, work with her, and then take on Brainiac. I like mm -hmm. that. And I'd like to see season three do something uh, unique as well and season four where we finally get Deathstroke. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, understand, I like, I don't love, <laughs> but uh, it, it's been fun so far. All right. Good double D segment. Um, Fudge is going to need some therapy now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's move on to the next subject. So uh, we are going to move you up here right quick. Uh, so, yeah. It's been a week since we came back from Evo. Yeah. 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 There, there was a lot of good. There, there was a lot of good. There was a, a lot. Bit of bad. And then there was just a whole lot of gross. <sighs> so, I, where you want to start off with the good? Uh, with the good presentation, honestly, was some of the best I've seen. The kiosks yeah. or what booths, whatever the hell you want to call them, were all absolutely awesome. Lines were not nearly as treacherous as we initially thought they were going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously the one I visited the most was the Mortal Kombat one which they had made up to look like the uh, what the fire temple in MK1 it actually it looked oh, wow. I saw that Absolutely it looked really awesome. nice yeah, yeah it looked, looked nice. so good uh, the PlayStation booth looked really really good plus like fully concreted floors every single one of the booths had carpet and I was just so thankful for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, it gave my feet a break at least for a little bit. Um Capcom was kind of eh. 2XKO, 2XKO's booth was definitely booming. They definitely had one of the biggest spaces in the place. Yeah. I agree. And hands down one of the most impressive arcades I have ever seen. I heard the arcade was awesome. Uh, see, I thought it was just going to be fighting games. I didn't know it was like just about every game you'd want to play. Uh, so, yeah, they had a little bit of everything. Obviously, there was a bunch of fighting game stuff. There. Sure, of course. Yeah. And they did it thematically as well. Like, if you saw Tekken, like, that entire row was, like, Tekken all the way up to, like, Tekken 8. Oh, it, nice. it was yeah. so cool looking. Uh, they did it with Mortal Kombat. They did it with Street Fighter. They did it with the, the Marvel versus games. Uh, there were even a couple anime fighters in there as well that looked really, really awesome. And then you'd have like two or three rows of like beat em ups, two or three rows of like bullet hell games, and then like a whole section of nothing but rhythm games, a whole section of wow. nothing but shooters and light gun games. It, it was, I was 12 years old again, man. I was so happy. And, yeah. um, my one regret of the arcade is somebody put a Sonic Blast Man uh, arcade game in there. I, I don't know how many of you remember it, but it was this video screen, and it was you like you had to stop a truck or you had to stop a giant crab. Or in this case, when I found it, it was on the last stage, and you had to stop a meteor from crashing into the earth, and this giant padded target would pop up, and you had the boxing glove, and you had to hit it as hard as you could to see if you could break it. <laughs> And I wish I had made a video just on the crowd that was at that cabinet. Because 
that was some of the most entertaining shit all weekend of watching. I don't want to be mean and say weak, but frailer than they realize people running up and punching the thing and hurting their hand. Ah! Or oh the drunk gosh. people swinging and just missing completely. Um, or the people that were just a little too into it, that swung so hard that they broke the railing next to the machine. What? Yeah, some dude hit the machine so hard that it shifted the machine and broke the railing that was holding it up. <laughs> wow. <sighs> um, Jeez. I am not as weak as I thought. But I'm definitely not as strong as I thought because uh, you needed 250 some odd points to break the meteor crashing into Earth. I was about 201, hmm. so I was like, "Okay, I'm I'm not as weak as I thought, but I'm not strong enough to save the world." Apparently, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it that that you hit a lot of the same points. I'd say like uh, Evo was fantastic uh, in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, two XKO. I liked uh, Fatal Fury, uh, City of the Wolves. That was sick. I got to try some Spark and Zero. Fantastic game. Felt exactly how I thought it would. Okay, so uh, I'm glad you mentioned Sparking Zero. So one of the bads from Evo is apparently I'm just never going to make a Dragon Ball video again because me saying this game is not for me. Apparently just made me public enemy number one to the Dragon Ball community. Uh-huh. I have never seen so many negative comments on a YouTube video in my life. All because I got to play it for five minutes and I didn't like it. It's the most insane thing I've ever seen. You made a video about playing Sparking Zero at Evo? Yeah. And people just dogpiled it because you said it's not for me. Oh, God, yes, they did. I have been <laughs> responding to com- Like, I finally muted all comments last night. I have been responding to comments since I posted it Saturday night while I was at Evo. Just going like, of course I'm going to suck. It's my first time playing. It was all of our first time playing. Like, <laughs> get That's something that I want to touch on when we get to the bad, because I got a lot to say. Okay. But I, I did try some Spark and Zero. Like you said, the PlayStation booth was fantastic. The Evo booth was fantastic. I liked the uh, uh, the timeline of all the different sticks used by all of the different yeah, Evo museum was yeah excellent. fantastic also the wall that showed every evil champion in the history of ever like stuff like that just really 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 hits home when you go to a place like evo because it's just like it's like it's like our super bowl you know what i'm saying yeah. like it's it you know what i'm saying it's just the tournament you know what i'm saying and i loved the champions wall but when i went and saw it Somebody had already vandalized it, and I'm pretty sure you know. Oh what I'm my God. About. Uh, yeah, we. I mean, you want to you want to save that for bad or or or, or the what's the I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not sure we should bring it up at all. You're right. No, no, no. You're right. Subject. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I I didn't personally see the vandalism, but I saw the posts afterwards, and I was like, I didn't even notice yeah. that. But uh, yes. long story short, audience, pretty much what we're talking about is that there were certain individuals that were banned from the event that showed up anyway. Oh, and, anyway. Yeah, yeah. And they did not find out until the event was already over that they were there. Which we could also talk about in the bad. Evo security, it's like a joke. Like, where did they get these people? <laughs> like, whoa. Just but... So many people in with backpacks. The metal detectors are going off on every single person. Uh-huh. Nobody's getting checked. No, nothing. Yep. But strollers in the arena. Oh, no, sir. Better Don't not you bring dare. a stroller. <laughs> So yeah, it was just that was silly. I like the artist alley. I like the setups. Uh the setups were uh pretty much the same as last year. They had those really nice monitors. The headsets weren't always working properly, but the point is like it just felt very like uniform across the board when it came to the playing stations. The arcade, yes, I will say was fantastic. It was exactly, I'm not going to say it was identical to last year, but it was pretty much like gave off that same feel of this massive space of just just going back to nostalgia. I didn't really sit down and play every game. I honestly played 
none of them but just one which ended up being street fighter 4 um there were no stations for street fighter 4 so it was just that cab and it was a title station cab so the line was long and i just i wanted to play so bad and then it's like i'm seeing these people and they're like good but i'm just like dog these guys suck hurry up i want to get on oh and i streak God. for so long i streak for like a bunch of games until eventually i have to use the bathroom or get up i i love going to this sub four cab but yeah like the good was definitely gooding outside of the convention center. You know, you get your usual suspects like Fat Tuesdays and all these other nice restaurants. Like Evo was definitely a good package. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, he was like that. I know he would be bored in tears for a good chunk of it, but like I, I have always wanted to bring him along. I, you can't get me to Vegas for Evo. You, my mother can't get me to Vegas for the film convention every year. I know. I, you're not going to have me walking on the surface of the sun. I'm too big for this. Do you have any <laughs> idea how little I was actually outside? Do, mm, 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 nope. I, I was a four-minute walk from the venue. I was outside a grand total of four minutes. Do you want me to die? You're not going to die. I, I didn't die. You won't die. Here's one bad. good thing that I will say. It may not be good to y'all or anybody, but it's one thing that I'm. I would say is particularly good. They, as you all know, you know, the weather in Las Vegas is, you know, it's dry heat. You know what I'm saying? It's like 115, 100, almost 120 during the daytime, about 108 to 110 during the nighttime. Yep. It's like I would be outside. I did something crazy on Thursday where I walked from the West Gate. I still can't believe you did that. <laughs> <laughs> I walked from my hotel, the West Gate. All the way, like three long Vegas blocks, which is equivalent to about 15 New York blocks. And it was like I walked all the way to Fat Tuesdays because I was like, I got to have me the giant. I got to have me my cherry mango Hennessy. I got to have it. And cherry mango Hennessy. Yeah, man. Double okay. shot. Okay. Yeah. All right. I walked over there. Spent Manhattan. like four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the guy, I told him, I was like, you open? He was like, yeah, man. What's up? I was like, I just walked from the Westgate. He's like, you what? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's don't do what I did. But the reason why I did it was because I felt like I wasn't just blowing up in sweat. You know what I'm saying? It's different from humidity, you know? It's dry yeah, heat. Yeah, like it, it was hot, but like I wasn't sweating at all. Yeah. Clothes and completely dry. Some people feel like they'll just melt in Vegas, but I'm here to tell you, like, honestly, that it gets hot, but your body gets used to it. And depending on where you're from and depending on how much you're used to walking, being outside isn't always that bad. But for most people, I'd say just take cabs, honestly. But there was one cabinet in particular, because I know you and me, Fudge, mm. we love our beat-em-ups. You, did you find a virtual on machine? Yes, I did. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm missing that game so Not much. only was there a virtual lawn machine at Evo, there was a side tournament for it. Ooh. I lost for the first time in 10 years to the most insane Raiden player <clears throat> I have ever seen in my life. He was magnificent. I have <laughs> never seen somebody control Raiden like that. I mean, Raiden's a good bot. I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, but... Me and the missus, because like I felt bad and I wanted to find something me and her could play together. So we found this beat em up arcade cabinet called Jitsu Squad. Hmm. Apparently, it was a special arcade cabinet because it had extra characters on it that are not in the home release. Oh, Do you remember the anime, The Samurai Pizza Cats? I, yeah, <laughs> they were playable. <laughs> what? Yeah, okay, that game was sick. And shout out to my FGC friends, because you will know who I'm talking about right away. Apparently, this is the game that Maximilian Dude collaborated on, because the missus found an icon in the game. She grabbed it. Maximilian appeared on screen with Benny, his dog, That's so and sick. fired a massive energy beam at everybody. <laughs> That's, <laughs> awesome. That's so sick. <laughs> but moving on to the bad. Um <sighs> There, there was a good amount of bad. The entire Sunday situation was rough. Everybody had to pay an arena fee. What? And only yeah. about a third of the people actually got to go into the arena. I'm so, sorry. Run that back for me real quick. So everyone paid an arena fee. Yes. 
and only a third of the people were allowed to go into the arena? Because the arena reached max capacity twice to the point fire marshals got car- called. Oh, okay. Compared to previous years where for a while it was you pay for your Evo badge, but then separately you pay for admission into the top eight arena uh, and yeah. it would just be separate. But they tried to consolidate and really just put it all together with one big fee. But what what good is it if more than half the people can't even get in? Exactly. Like the line. I don't even want to talk about the line. I, it w- it was it wasn't the line. It wasn't a line. It was the devil. Honestly, it was. <laughs> that was an oasis of like bodies. That it was, was never ending. I couldn't believe it was a line. I thought it was multiple lines for different booths. When I was walking around and going to different artist alleys and doing some last minute shopping, like I thought it was just different lines for different places some being a bit longer than others but when my team manager told me it's literally the line to get into the arena and it scales the entire convention room i was like no joke because that line went out the door on sunday the end of the line from the entrance all the way to the line ended was about the equivalent of about four football fields wow Mm mm-hmm it was That's it was crazy. It was crazy. It was so it was so bad that uh, Rick had to scale the line. Every couple of people, he would shout. Eventually, he had to just get a, a horn that it's at capacity and that you should reconsider trying to go into the arena because you're probably not going to get in. Fire marshals are telling people that they can't get in and you are more than likely going to be on this line for no reason for hours. And it did not stop people. That's what sucked about it was because so many people, people cried. People were like really emotional because a lot of the reason that they came was to watch the matches, look at the artists at Lego, but to be there at those finals. One of the big selling points about Evo is those top eight finals. Mm -hmm. And it's like when you tell people that this is included with their purchase, which a lot of them are casuals or just straight up spectators, they want to watch. Boom, the door is right there. And you're saying that they can't get in. That sucked. And... Rick and the entire Evo team definitely took that feedback. They're very well aware of it, but that was a really bad thing that was happening. I think this just boiled down to just an egregious miscalculation of space. Because Massive recap. For, for uh, the past three years, they've had access to the Mandalay Bay Sports Arena. Yeah. What they had this time around was nowhere close to that size. Nowhere close. Yeah. And the whole time I'm just thinking, who are all these people that – are in Sunday finals that were not here because yes, yeah, Sunday kind of felt a little bit less like it, it felt a little bit, you know, more empty, but it didn't feel like 20,000 people empty. Like yeah. I'm like, who are all these people and how are they in the arena? You know what I'm saying? It's like, it was, it was crazy. It was, it was honestly sick. Um, some other bad stuff. Uh, I said the headsets, a lot of the headsets didn't work properly. They would uh, desync. They mm-hmm. were not, you know, properly calibrated. Um, some people, it personally didn't happen to me, but some people were saying um, certain games had the wrong patches, uh, didn't have the right characters. That happened the first match of Mortal Kombat 1 Top 8. <sighs> Nicolas had, like, Nicolas and Javier, I think, were the two, first two people to play. Nicolas won the first round. And he was told that they had to redo it again because they needed to repatch the game. And Nicholas wound up losing. Yeah. Wow. That's what? whack. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. It's not cool. The headset yeah. stuff I can attest to because during my Mortal Kombat run, two of the matches I played, headset wasn't working properly. So I wasn't getting the correct audio cues. And mm. well, Ryan saw the end result of that. That was the. <sighs> First time ever, I I left the tournament just in tears. I, I was I was so angry and so upset at my performance, and it was just due to shit out of my control. Yeah, and I think a lot of the one of the, another big point of contention with Evo was the massive notion that 
people just felt like they didn't see anybody that they knew. It was a massive. Uh, I know why you're laughing. I was about to say you got roasted for this last night. <laughs> it, 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 it was a it was a massive uh, coming together. Of people just saying, "Hey, man, I figured out that tons and tons of people I knew that I hadn't seen in such a long time were here, and I saw them like not once." And I think a large part of that was due to the fact that it was in the convention center that was separate from all the hotels it wasn't like how it was the last few evos where you know it was linked to a larger you know general hotel and then you know the other ones were just not far so they could all we could all meet in the same place yeah everybody could meet each other easily this place it was just different everybody was so far from each other you were either walking distance or cab distance and what that does is that everybody comes to the convention center at different times for different reasons, you know what I'm saying? You might go in, your friends are leaving because they went to go eat or sleep or whatever. Yeah. And it's just, it was extremely difficult to catch everybody, you know? Um, it felt, I was getting a lot of dry. People were just like, I just feel like nothing's going on. I feel like, you know, I don't want to feed too, in, too much into that because that's a very subjective feeling, but it just felt kind of dry, you know, maybe certain things could have been more spicy or whatever, you know, but, um, but yeah, that's some of the uh, bad things I would say. On that, I will kind of comment on it a little bit. Like I can see where some people come from with that. Cause like, for example, me and the missus, we're in the heart of Vegas and neither one of us really care for gambling. Mm-hmm. So that kind of rules out the most, big thing you can do at Vegas. So we had to find other things to do. So there were definitely a few lulls where we were either just waiting for people or we were just waiting for something to start to where like we would actually leave the venue in some cases, even leave the strip and just like, Oh, there's a K-pop store over there. I want to go to. All right, let's, let's go. Like this, this ain't just my vacation. It's yours as well. Let's go do something you want to do. Or there's a Japanese market over at this ball over here. All right, well, let's go do that. Like, I can get it. I can get where people are coming from with that. But at the same time, it's Vegas. There's always something to do. True. You just got to go find it. A lot of magicians. Yeah. Now, one thing I will say this. Whether you're a gambling person or not, you need to be prepared to bring your wallet. Because I don't care where you live. I promise you. It's more expensive in Vegas, <laughs> especially <laughs> if you're on the strip. Yeah. Um, magicians, shows, anything like that, $100, $150 minimum. Yeah. And, like, it's, it's rough. It's rough out there. So if you want to do stuff like that, you want to catch shows, stuff like that, be prepared to pay. Did you go to XMART at all? Um, but finally, let's talk about the gross. <laughs> and um, this is dad mode, Jay Coon coming here. Um, I understand it's your first tournament. I understand a lot of y'all are young. But I'm going to give you the greatest piece of advice that anyone has ever given you when it comes to your personal hygiene. <laughs> Just because you can't smell it doesn't mean the rest of us can't smell it. <clears throat> Some of you motherfuckers were out there literally committing war crimes with your body odor. And, like, I get it. This was the biggest Evo in existence. 20,000 plus people. It's a lot of noise going on in there. You might be able to let out a squeaker here and there. Nobody's going to be the wiser. No one's going to hear it. But we can smell it. And we can smell you. (laughs) Wash your ass. Ass. (laughs) Seriously. I am so close. Excuse me. Pizza. Popcorn in my throat. I am so close to coming to these events with a backpack full of speed sticks That if I just get a whiff of anyone, I am going to start humming those bitches at mock speed at you. And I'm pretty sure no one's going to say shit to me about it. 
If anything, they'll probably applaud me if the speed stick is antiperspirant. Friday and Saturday. Extra 30 cents goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Friday and Saturday pulls. <coughs> Ungodly. Literally. People out here literally like doing chemical warfare with how they smell. Like it's it's absolutely disgusting. You mean nerds that don't touch grass fail to wash themselves in a timely fashion? See, that's the thing. It's 2024. We touch grass. And it's mostly a Sony event now, so the Smash <laughs> players were nowhere to be found. <laughs> so you can't fully blame them anymore. Oh man. <laughs> Leave the it's, players alone. Listen, it, I don't know what it is. It's well, just like... No matter what, so I'm going to say what I came to say. You know, listen, they wash their bodies, just not their outfits. They'll fall apart. <laughs> yeah, like... Sit there and tell me I'm wrong. I dare you. I, I won't. <laughs> yeah, even just some of the things that you see in, like, the bathrooms, which there were plenty of. I'm, I'm talking, like, I haven't seen that many bathrooms. It's just... I don't understand how people can just pull up to an event that's in the heart of Vegas. It's scorching hot outside and you don't wash your ass. Like that's so crazy. It, it was, it was insane to me. I mean, granted, if you were just going from, let's say, hypothetically speaking, you were only just going from the West gate to the convention, which was just a walkway. You were outside for no more than 60 seconds. Yeah. Let's just say that you were still sweating because it just it's just the environment and they would just wear the same clothes or just not even and I'm I just I just can't wrap my head around that. But I mean that's not like a phenomena like even when I go like to uh, when I went to like Chicago Comic Con or um I forget the name of it, but there's an awesome convention. It's more like around April or May in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, or even like, um, I'm sure it's San Diego Comic-Con this last weekend. I'm sure it's been an issue there too at all of those as well. Oh, I'm sure it has. Like this has been a, like, this has been a war we have been fighting for a long, long time. And you'll never mm -hmm. have isolated incidents. If there is a convention, there's going to be folk there who, well, stank. 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 Yeah. Fudge and I worked the convention circuit for a long, long time. It yeah. yeah, we we always find it. Or in this case, the funk finds us. There was a uh I don't think I ever told you about this, Jay. There there was someone at Magfest when I was working concert security some years back. Mm -hmm. And we kept rolling through because you know, some of us were in plain clothes, we'd roll through like the crowd in the concert hall and you know get people out that were doing things who weren't meant to and take things away from, you know, people who snuck them in, that kind of thing. There was this one time there was just a stank. <clears throat> Couldn't quite place it. And then after about 45 minutes of like three, four people talking about it, we went back out there and just walked the line and we found it. And one of us said, I got a can of aerosolized Febreze in my room. And I said, I got zip ties. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about a can of Febreze is if you zip tie the handle down, it don't stop going. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, they walked into the bathroom and one of us threw that thing in behind him and just held the door shut for a couple minutes. And <laughs> <laughs> Well, they came out smelling like flowers. They was hopping mad. <laughs> but they didn't stink no more. Small price to pay, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Some um, people call it chemical warfare. I call it justice. <laughs> but uh, the last thing I'm going to touch on with that. Tournament goers. I get it. Evo was a bit of a clusterfuck on Sunday. If you leave the arena, you're likely going to lose your seat and you're not going to be able to come back in. However, that does not mean the only viable solution. Oh, your God. Feet is to soil yourself. I beg your pardon. Oh part. God. Come again. I oh yeah, that's right. Seats with puddles of piss <sighs> in them because people refuse to leave. What? And then there were actually no, never mind. I'm not gonna mention that one because the the seats were confirmed not from Evo. So I'm not gonna talk about the one with Yeah, the no, that picture's line. old. Yeah, but... that one's old. But the P seat 
was not. That was shot in the arena. So, yeah. If you got to go, fucking go. Like, come on. <laughs> in that sentence with a completion, go not in your seat. Yeah, that too. Go find a restroom. They were literally plastered all over this place. Just go pee and roll the dice like everybody else to get back in. Oof. Yeah. And if you don't get back in, that's fine. I didn't get in on Sunday. Hell, I didn't even try to get back in. Maximilian was doing a watch party right next to the entrance. I parked it over there and had a blast. That's true. Yeah. I, I can't. I, what? I just I can't with these people, man. Who, yeah. Why would, they, why would you pee yourself to watch a fighting game? Why? Why? Especially when you could go, and yeah, you may not be in the arena, but there are literally screens everywhere, in the ceiling, on the walls, on the stages, out in the hallway, that you can still watch the fight. Mm -mm. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah. But mm -mm. even with all the bad... The good outweighed it, and I would recommend everybody going to Evo at least once in their life. Trust me, you will not regret it. And my God, will you have some funny stories to bring back. <laughs> yep. Mm -mm. Agree. But moving on, Marvel Rivals. Beta's been going on for about a week now. For some of you, it's your first time playing. For me, it's my second time. I was part of the previous beta, so I got in kind of automatically for free, which was very nice. And uh, the improvements to the game are most welcomed. Venom feels a little overpowered at the moment. <laughs> but Did you know, you turn what? off swing assist? Say what? Did you turn off swing assist? I didn't even need it. Makes it worse to turn it off. Oh, really? Yeah. How so? Better control. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so you've been playing. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> you've not been playing? You've been dominating? You've been consuming? I, I played the fifth. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> no, there, there, are little, there are little things you can do here and there to do things to your character, make you a little more... Uh, Disgusting, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's uh, yeah, no, Venom's OP as shit. Don't touch it, yeah. <laughs> and uh, during Comic Con this weekend, which we'll touch on that more, they added two more characters. Um, I don't remember how much longer the beta is going to be open, uh, August 5th, oddly enough. Oh, okay, wow. so at That's least pretty long. long, yeah. Excellent, That's excellent. With the announcement of Comic Con, they announced that Doctor Doom is coming, and they have added to the beta right now <laughs> four, and Jeff the Shark, Jeff the Land Shark. Yes. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> and yes, Jeff the Land Shark looks absolutely adorable. He is adorable. He plays adorably too. <laughs> Can but, we yell about Doctor Doom for a second? Say what? Can we yell about Doctor Doom for a second? In the Comic Con section, yes. Okay. <laughs> Although there are there are in this game though, rivals, there are two dooms. One from the past and I guess one from the future. Or one from the present and one from the future. So yeah, I think how they're saying it is it's present doom, uh what squaring off against Doom twenty ninety nine. Yes, which yeah. I thought was a pretty neat idea. Which ain't bad. He is he is hate typing. I can see him. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not hate typing. <laughs> Feel the heat coming off that keyboard. <laughs> I'm not hate typing. Uh huh. Okay? I'm I'm not. What would you call it then? Aggressive clickety clackety. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, I mean, what's everybody's impression on this? Like, I definitely like. I enjoyed it, but I definitely read it wrote it off as a like an overwatch clone but like with the improvements i've seen in this it's actually it's been a lot more enjoyable the second time around yes uh very polished i agree i, I don't always agree with ign but ign said one thing they were surprised at how polished this was and yeah i had like almost like no bugs or anything like that for as much as i've been playing it uh did you play on the first go round hoarder no Okay, so you you definitely missed some uh, fuckery. 
Um, <laughs> back when, because during the, all throughout the first one, me, Lejeune, King Greek, and Miller, we would all play together. Um, every single time King Greek picked Doctor Strange and activated a portal, it was a dice roll as to whether or not it was going to crash his game. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. I will say those portals are pretty awesome, though. Yeah. That's, that's pretty neat. Wow. Like, he did some fun stuff, but, like, every other match, King Greek has left the session. And I was like, well, shit. <laughs> so everyone that's played it, I do have a question, though. Mm -hmm. uh, so the amount of time it takes to get when you get, like, downed and you're trying to get back to the objective – does it just me, or does it seem longer than, like, in Overwatch? I can't comment fully on Overwatch, but I do believe the timer is a little long deliberately. Okay. To encourage people to, uh, we have a saying in the Destiny world all the time, that's, uh, and it's called play your life. Okay. You know, it means do whatever you got to do, but your top priority is don't die. Uh, and I know a lot of MOBAs kind of operate like this as well, where dying is insanely detrimental because it gives the opposing team such a huge advantage, you being down a guy, that I think they're kind of following a very similar path with this, where like a teammate going down is ultimately kind of like the tide turner of the match. But see what, what, I can definitely see where they're coming from with that. One of the issues I had with, though, too, is some of the characters just move slower than others. So it seems like this slog that you have to go through that doesn't seem necessary, especially when you play Conquest. I think it's called Conquest. It's the other mode type. Mm -hmm. uh, and there it, like, has you spawned right near the objective each time. And I think it just makes more sense. Uh, so I think, and all I have to go on is Overwatch on this. Because I complained about Overwatch's mobility as well. Like, certain characters were just way more mobile than others. <clears throat> but those characters were also significantly weaker than others. Like, the more health you had, the slower you tend to move. And I think they just they made the, the mobility in this game just like how it is in Overwatch, where, like, it's very deliberate because... Well, let's be fair. If everybody in Overwatch had Destiny movement a match would be fought to a stalemate every time because mobility yeah. is so important. So there needs to be something in there that helps turn the tide of a match. That way, you know, the match actually ends because uh, I don't know about anybody else. I think if it hits over time and a control point stays contested, there's no countdown timer. It's just there until somebody wipes out somebody else. Yeah. So if mobility was a constant, like, thing overtime would never end so well, i guess yeah yeah <clears throat> how did everyone feel about ttk uh time to kill honestly i'm kind of whatever on it okay uh if i had to change anything uh i feel like a lot of everybody's attacks like i wouldn't speed up mobility i would i would speed up projectiles um punisher Really feels like the only one with a viable gun. Everybody else is just like pew, pew. He's a lot of fun That's to play so too. Annoying. Pew, pew, and yeah, that got tiresome in a big hurry. Yeah. Uh, the melee characters feel great; like they they swing pretty fast. But my god, especially Venom. Venom feels like you you're just swinging at people a mile a second so <laughs> and if your team knows what they're doing they can constantly armor you and heal you as yeah. you're armoring yourself and you're basically an un unstoppable killing machine it's yeah venom cool. feels very one man army at the moment and while i will understand if they touch him it was a lot of fun <laughs> it was definitely a lot of fun but uh what's everybody's you good, Fudgy? <laughs> you sure? You you don't look good. No, I'm good. I think a rant is coming. No, no, I'm not. no. Mm -mm. So, so he is he is cooking up something. I can see. It. <laughs> <laughs> he he's got something to say. Game balancing is a nuanced and difficult thing to do in the early stages of any PvP arena game. Sure. Yeah. It's going to take some time. Things mm -hmm. people enjoy are going to go away. Things people don't like might get improved. I have no rant.
Nope. I, I see that butt on your lips. I see it. The only butt I have right now is the one I'm sitting on. Ah! Uh, <laughs> but also, uh, it's not even it's not even really about the game, man. It's just the market is so oversaturated with these things. Like, it feels like every other team arena game. And I, you know, okay, so the, the infatuation with the characters is cool. And you know, that gets people excited. Good for them. It's just, it feels like everything else. I won't and, disagree with that. Um, I'm kind of bored of the style of game, I guess. Because, like, you can only remake <clears throat> the same thing so many times. True. Sure. See, like, I get really entrenched in, in Overwatch. But with this, I love Marvel. So, like, I've been enjoying it. And the team-ups actually are pretty awesome. Yeah, no, I mean that's cool. I'm just saying every every one of these games has their own little nuance and their own little detail. And the team ups is dope. Don't get me wrong. And all the characters that they're adding, okay, cool, great. I just I'm kind of over it. I, I I don't really have a rant. I mean, I'm just kind of over the the game style, honestly. You know what? This right here, I will I will just straight up go ahead and say it. No. What about with the level of polish, though? I actually, I actually happen to know Mike. Uh, what about with the level of polish, though? It's very polished, even though there's, you know, still oh, some things here and there. Yeah, so, no, I mean, you're an early release still. I mean, you're in, uh, polish is coming if it's not already where they're going to want it to be. Visual polish is whatever because, like, they can make changes to the textures and you know upgrade all that later on. Yeah, I mean, um, it's just if it wasn't Marvel, I don't think people would play it. Like, a franchise can definitely carry because number one, this is not the first type of game to come out. Like, when Overwatch came out shortly afterwards, we yeah. saw Paladins and Battleborn, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. When and Battleborn. Came out. Yep. Um, so this, this is nothing new, it's just been the fact that Overwatch has been on top of this market for so long. Whether it be to funding, uh, popularity, what have you, because I'll, I'll be the first one to admit, Overwatch is one of the most successful, yet in my opinion, underutilized franchise out there. Like, they don't really venture outside their box very much. You have enough substance and characters to where you could make an animated movie. Yeah, and it would be fantastic. You could do live action, you do animated. Yeah. 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 You could do some great stuff with Overwatch, but they just don't. And like, because of the rabid fan base, like Blizzard loyalists are loyal. Yes. Like yeah. they that is one of the biggest reasons that Overwatch has stayed on top for so long. Because anything, anything Marvel, it, it's gonna get some attention. And anything with a licensed franchise behind it is going to get attention, at least for a little while. Sure. Case in point, who remembers Gundam Evolution? Oof. Yeah. Gundam Evolution was blow for blow Gundam Overwatch. Marvel Rivals is blow for blow Marvel Overwatch. Yeah. So. And we've all played Team Fortress enough. Bingo. The originator. I mean, I, it really was though. Like, and the yeah. the fact that they finally found that game started to die because of the way that the bots overtook the game population. Hmm. And now that they've found a way to finally wipe them out, like the game is basically dead. Mm -hmm. Like, just because you slap a Marvel skin on something doesn't inherently make it good. Look what happened with the Captain America video game. What? It was a reskinned, low budget Arkham. Yeah, it, but but in it its defense, it was still <laughs> one of the best of that series of games they were doing of the MCU games. Like the Thor one was terrible. Sure. Like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's. But that's what I'm trying to say is just because you put Marvel on it doesn't mean it's going to be good. Doesn't mean it has value as a game in the market. Doesn't mean it's going to last the test of time. Like, all those early MCU games that came out were just god-awful because there was no budget for them. They were blowing all their budget on the movies and, you know, putting out whatever schlock they could to try and make money in another market. And now that the MCU has established itself, especially as a Disney property, they make money hand over fist everywhere they go. It doesn't matter what they do. You got your shirts, all the merch, all the, you know, the game properties, you know, the mobile apps are basically licenses to print money. 
because mommy and daddy will give little Billy and Jane, you know, $10 for microtransactions here and there. And then any adult who's got no self-control on a credit card will just be buying up whatever they want. God, That's the thing. How many sponsorship opportunities I've gotten from Marvel Strike Force <laughs> that I just continue to turn down. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. But like, you know, this is nothing more than a reskin of low budget Overwatch or whatever else you want to call it from that entire game list. Like it, there are so many. There are games in that list you probably forgot existed, like Brink. Oh man! Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You don't like to think about that one, do you? But after they fixed their netcode issue, it was actually kind of enjoyable for about an hour. Isn't Brink the team doing uh, Marvel or uh, I'm sorry, Transformers Reactivate, or is it part of them or something like that? Brink was a Bethesda title. Yeah, I thought it was Splash Damage. Were they involved with part of Brink? I don't know. I'll have to check. But I can I can tell you this: I remember very fully when Brink came out. It was unplayable. Their netcode was convincing me to buy it. Yeah, their netcode was broken. <laughs> well, I played the demo. The demo was good. It was fun. It was entertaining. <laughs> but when they actually released the product, they didn't do proper testing on the netcode for load. Yeah. So all of a sudden, anyone playing with anyone else, everyone was moving an inch a minute. Yeah, it, it was pretty bad. But the point is, they've been making this type of team game for... 20 years or more and they get boring and just because you put a little paint on it doesn't mean the same shit shack you have out back of the barn is still any good but I agree. No people that it, like like that type of game like that genre like sure. looter shooters looter yeah. shooter enjoyers are gonna flock to every looter shooter they see like i'm a fighting game player so i'm gonna take a look at pretty much every fighting game yeah. you can kind of say that for any genre yeah I will say for what it is, and I will definitely not back off the fact that, yes, it, it's an Overwatch clone. It's one of the better ones I've played. Yeah, for me, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying it can't be fun. I'm just saying it's probably going to die off very quickly. I do not think it will stick around as long as Overwatch, no. I do not I, think Marvel name alone will carry it. I think the skins are going to sell really well. I think it's going to do really well with cosmetics. The skins yeah. are going to go hard, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, also uh, the rumor right now, no one knows, but it might be that we start with like two or three characters and the rest we either earn or purchase. So yeah. they're going to make a lot of money if they sell those characters. Because it, it, then, then it would be similar to Multiversus where you only get one or two characters at the outset and then you purchase other ones, you know? Yeah, but giving your, giving your game a three-person roster when it's supposed to be a multiplayer team game... Shooting yourself in the foot. I see. I don't know if it's going to be three necessarily, but the idea is that it's possible we'll be buying the characters that come out. I don't know exactly how they're going to do that, or if it's just going to be cosmetics when they, you know, figure things out or whatever. But that it just, I having the possibility there. It's just something to keep in mind with a free to play game too. You know. Hmm. Yeah, with it with it being free to play, I don't expect the full roster to be unlocked right off the rip. Uh, I would say, if it were me, I would give you half the roster, and then the other half I would split in half again. One where you can earn them quite easily. Like, just a few menial things, and you'll get them. And then the other half of that half, I would make you grind a little bit. Maybe not fully attach it to rank, but... You might have to do a few weeks of weekly quests to get all of them. Yeah. And then the rest of them, dole them out with the battle pass. If you want them right now, 10 bucks. If not, 5 bucks. get the pass, you get the character halfway through. Treat it just like Destiny does. You want that new exotic? Pay for the premium track, you get it right now. If you want the regular track, you get it halfway through the pass. Yeah. I would say that's fair. I'm very interested to see, too, how that does versus Concord, because uh, I know the Concord numbers weren't great for the beta, but a lot of people that played it, including I, thought it was a pretty fun game, and I actually I thought it was really fun. good. I forgot that even happened. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly... Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, so I feel that 
there's kind of an under underserved community that really wanted what Overwatch 2 was going to be with the PVE, with the story, with the progression. And I feel that with either of the games, Marvel Rivals or Concord, the first one that decides to have some level of PVE is going to be the one that succeeds. Yeah, um, I wouldn't disagree with that because the one that caters to both audiences will obviously get the bigger audience in the end. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't dispute that at all. That that'd be very fair. And Concord and that, is all reason tech, uh, that Destiny has survived as long as that it has is because it caters to everyone. Yes, so, yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. When did like objectively? When did the gaming culture? with you know first person shooters in these arena games really start leaning away from having that as an aspect versus the game itself because when you think about it all of the original like first person shooters and arena titles had a campaign mm -hmm. and then you had multiplayer which is kind of evolved into just cutting off the meat and leaving the potatoes league of legends Honestly, I would say Titanfall 1. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, there's Titanfall a kind of a story, but yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's the thing. Even with no. the, the story of Titanfall 1, it's here are your factions. Yeah. This is why mm -hmm. they hate each other. And then when Titanfall 2 released with an actual story, fans rejoiced. Oh, yeah. And it was one of the best written like first-person shooter campaigns ever. Yeah, Titan Titanfall 2's campaign was just like MVP, like instantly. And, that shit was so good. And with all the success of that game, Riot still turned around and made what Valorant? Is that is that the one that they made? What uh, I think you're talking about Apex. Or Apex, yeah, you're yeah. right. Like they, they they made Apex and they just completely abandoned their flagship product because it made more money. That's the thing. It's the microtransactions yeah. that are making money, but all of these companies are leaning away from like actual decent storytelling with their products that could still include those things. Like you could still take a Titanfall three and you could have a campaign, but you could also have a multiplayer with everything else. It's kind of the same way that call of duty is doing mm -hmm. because call of duty includes a campaign. Still most of them, one of them recently did. I think it was one of the black ops. But it includes a campaign which you play and enjoy, and then you've got multiplayer. But the multiplayer is so nuanced that it still, you know, gives a lot of breadth and enjoyment to the fan base, while also raking in a shitload of money. So I mean, is this just lazy development practices? Is it lazy storytelling? Is it what are we dealing with here? Like honestly, it could be a mixture of all of it. Yeah, that's just how the industry is now. They they want to put in the least amount of work trying to get the most amount of profit and you know the only reason why they succeed is because gamers or well, at least the most casual gamers really just don't care they're just gonna keep paying and they're, they're just gonna keep milking those kind of players hmm? yeah, and I, I can attest to that because i mean i haven't touched fortnite in two months they still got 40 bucks of my money yesterday Oof. so yeah one of the problems too you got to keep in mind is it used to be three to five years to make a triple a game hmm. now it's like about seven years yeah so yeah, because of that they're making like sure. one game per generation of console so they got to make as much money off it as they can in order to fund a, perhaps another game or perhaps a follow-up whatever it is so it's basically all of it all their you know all the eggs in the basket, that's one game, not two or three, like it used to be with previous generations. Well, given that most of the AAA studios now are subsidiaries or larger companies that own multiple studios, what what company do you know of that's only making one product at a time now? NetherRealm Studios. Yeah? You think they're only working on one game? Currently, after everything we've learned... Yeah. WB Games, pretty close. Because, like, right now it's Wonder Woman. And whenever that comes oh, out. They're making a Wonder Woman game? They're oh, making a Wonder yeah. Woman game? Yeah, yeah. there's a trailer back up, in 2021. Back up, back up, back up. Back up. WB Studios, who owns them? WB. Oh, oh, okay. So, WB. So, yeah. WB. Okay. But what other game studios do they own? That's what I'm getting at. Because oh. the new stream doesn't stop for most of these companies. Sure. So, they uh, pivot. To what's active warner brothers montreal rocksteady now monolith who actually did the shadow of mordor and the shadow of war 
Mm -hmm. uh, they're the ones doing uh, Wonder Woman. So it's going to have the Nemesis system and all that. So I think it could be an amazing game. Also, that game had great combat that kind of aped off of uh, um, uh, Arkham games. But this is what I'm talking about when it comes to like, you know, different channels of revenue stream for these AAA companies. Mm -hmm. Another Realm Studios is an independent company, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they are owned by Warner Brothers. Oh, now. yeah, they are owned by oh, WB. Owned by Warner Brothers, which means that while they are still only making one product, Warner Brothers is still making more than one product because they've got more than one studio under their umbrella. I okay. always look at this from the perspective of when I was with Bethesda. Bethesda was owned by Zenimax. Okay. Zenimax owned Bethesda Game Studios, Bethesda Online Studios, uh, Machine Games, Tengu Games. You know, just a whole bunch of these small companies that were always making the company money mm -hmm. because they were on different timelines, going down different tracks, creating different products. Bethesda was making Fallout 4, but in the meantime, other games from those subsidiaries was coming out and feeding the revenue stream for the umbrella as a whole, which fed the revenue streams of the other companies during production. So, like, yeah, AAA studios are making a game every five to seven years, but... AAA studios by that same name are still pumping out a product every year or two, you know, through okay. one subsidiary or another. So like, sure, they can slow boat a big project like, um, uh, God, Black Myth or Black Myth Wukong is coming out this year. Yeah. Yeah. Finally. Like this month, I think. August 20th. Yep. That's a, that's a Chinese company. It's their first AAA title ever. When was the first trailer for Black Myth you saw? Like Five, four years ago? Mad years, years ago. More. More than five. More than five. Really? Yeah. Five is as far back as I can remember. Yeah, no, it's that's what I'm saying. Like all these established AAA companies exist in Europe, the United States, the UK, and Canada. Hmm. And that's about it. Like all these other companies that are making smaller products or indeed triple a level products they don't have the manpower to do the kinds of things that these you know homegrown triple a companies are doing because they're mostly massive mm. why can't we continue seeing decent triple a shooters or arena games still coming out with more than just the here you go kids keep yourselves busy for you know 15 minutes a match honestly as much of a fan of it as I am, I kind of blame Fortnite for that. That would, yeah, that'd definitely be a because they saw how much money. That's a good assessment, yeah. From yeah. Its, uh, transactions, yeah. Because they got they got new skins every what? How long is the season pass? Like three months? Uh, three months, and then the store refreshes daily. Yeah. So I mean, it's stuff like that. Yeah, they're raking in more money than God. <laughs> and I think a lot of other companies see that and want to try and emulate it because look how successful they are not coming to the realization that like the game is as successful as it is because at the end of the day, the game doesn't cost that much to make. It was made by three dudes in the corner of an office yep. that were just dicking around while the main version of the game was slowly bleeding to death. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> was it even, it was actually Save the World. That was the actual game. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Not, but the the overtaking of the games industry by live service games, this is, this is part of the issue I have with live service, is that they don't survive necessarily off merit. No. They survive off of microtransactions. So you're not yeah. making a complex game, telling a decent story, and having exceptional music. And like, it used to be like, a big deal when games would come out because it would be like, how awesome is this about to be? And mm -hmm. now it's just like a lot of that mystique is gone. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it is. Like, I mean, that's why like, and I know a lot of people hate it, but this is why I continue to sing the praise of games like destiny because destiny, honest to God is one of the only live service games I've seen do things right. Like, Every year, Destiny players look forward to that new expansion, that new experience, because they know, for the most part, they're going to get a total package. Mm -hmm. Whether it be fantastic music, fantastic scenery, brand new loot. Uh, I mean, the final shape is in the running for game of the year. Which is wild. And as an much expansion. As, like, hey, 
is in yeah. the running for game of the year. Like it's absolutely insane. And as much uh, as I hate neuter shooters, I can't take it away from them. I mean, they did that. Yeah. They, they the final shape was amazing. Yeah. And yeah, I, I feel like so many people keep chasing the tales of like destiny and Fortnite, even call of duty in some cases, because they've seen how wildly successful that these things are, that they refuse to try and break the mold and go back to doing their own thing, which nine times out of 10 doing their own thing is what made the money. Yeah. Companies are scared to be original. Yeah. True. Just really, really afraid to be original. Well, it's really expensive if you mess up. Yes. That's what's keeping them from doing it. They're yeah. just afraid of, you know. We fear right. change. <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> that's why, like, every few years we get an amazing, like, double A game, I guess you could call them. Uh, something like um, A Plague Tale. You know, like, that was awesome. And that was, mm -hmm. a, a, honestly, one of the best things that Focus Interactive ended up publishing. Uh, and then the sequel I thought was even better. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that stuff's really impressive, too, you know. Yeah, I would agree with this sentiment right here. The game industry as a whole is ballooned so big that the risk isn't there anymore. I, mm, I, I kind know, of agree with that. I don't know that I can fully agree with it because, yes, it has ballooned incredibly, but that's because of trying to keep up with modern technology. Mm. The, there's this bizarre belief that if you don't make a game or at least try to make a game that utilizes as much or all of the modern technological limitations that we have, that it's not worth it. And that's not true. Like, I mean, hell, look at games like Pizza Tower. Yeah. That game was wildly successful, and it looks like it was drawn in crayon. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Let's look at a lot of the Flash in the Pan games from the last few years. You remember, uh, oh, God, Lethal Company, for instance? I love that game. Every all made by game. what, one guy? Uh, I think it was a couple guys, but yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, what was the game that was really big over COVID with the, the little ghost dude, the little spacemen running around? Among Us. Yeah, yeah, Among Us. Yeah, Among Us was a phone app. And they ported it to PC, and all of a sudden it went insane. You have other games like Content Warning that are more like quick flashes in the pan, but games like that made people money hand yes. over fist. And For Among Us was so successful that Fortnite straight up ripped them off. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the other thing. They didn't last is what I'm getting at. Simplicity doesn't keep the attention of your average gamer for too long. Yeah. Hell Divers, despite the fact that they had all the drama with the Sony stuff, it's down like 80% of player pop. Yeah. And that's... Also including the metric for people in countries that can no longer play it because PSN is not available. Yeah. But that's in that, you know, percentage, a minority. The same thing in small doses gets boring real quick. Yeah. And it might last you a couple months, might last you six, a year. But eventually people are going to look at this and be like, why did I waste so much time on this? Well, see, yeah, that game has a story that you create with your friends as you're playing it, but that's not the same thing as having a well-done narrative, you know? Correct. Mm -hmm. And while Helldivers is unique in that a lot of their lore has actually come from the fan base, like the fan base just playing making stuff up. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the devs are like, yeah, we're going to grab yeah, all the kids in a toy box. Yeah, that sounds so good. Let's do that. But they're actively updating the game, changing things, adding things. But it's still not grasping the attention anymore. It's attention spans, honestly. It's, yeah. it's, 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 I think that's a conversation for something that actually goes outside of just gaming. Overall, people's attention spans are just extremely low nowadays. Like, oh, yeah. we really need something to capture you, you yeah. know? And I, I can even say that for myself. Like, uh, some, sometimes I find myself playing a game that I genuinely like. I enjoy it. But it, there's those off chances where I'm playing, and next thing you know, I wake up. And I'm like, bro, did I just fall asleep? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like Diablo 3 Ritz. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it's I don't know what it is. It's just how th how we're wired nowadays. And there have been certain games where I was just like, why did I the whole time? I was like, wow, this experience is so great. Like, yeah. Cyberpunk, Death Stranding, uh, the Near games. Like, those are some really, like, AAA titles that yeah. 
just kept me going because I was just so enwrapped in the world and I was just like, bro, I can't get enough of this. You know, y'all remember a little company called Ninja Theory? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, Ninja Gaiden and all that. The Senua games. Yes. Uh huh. The most recent one came out this year. It's like six hours long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never felt more like I was playing an art piece. Yeah, the story is amazing, though, too. I cried. That don't take much. Yes, it does. <laughs> Listen, I can list on less fingers than I have a full hand the games that have made me cry as an adult. Final Fantasy VII, when Eris dies. Yeah. Wolfenstein's <laughs> a new Colossus, but that's more like personal thing because, you know, angry Texan father. And Hellblade during the Fire Giant sequence. The ending of Death Stranding. I definitely got emotional there. Did you get hit in the face with a bag of poop? No, no, no. Uh, getting Lou to wake up. Ah. Or yeah. if you want to even pull back there, Lou's final <laughs> run. Oh, oof. I've yet to beat it. I've yet to. Play okay, that then, game. yeah, we, we will not say yeah. anything about that. <laughs> um, saying, like, there, there's it's a, a tearjerker at the end. There's a way to still make games that are emotionally charged enough to grasp the attention of the average player. It's yeah. just people aren't doing it. Yeah, because live service makes too much money. Yep. So as long as it continues to make money, we're just we're not going to continue seeing that effort unless it's bigger companies like Santa Monica Studios. Yeah. Also, you realize what we've been talking about without even realizing it is the idea of the auteur. You were talking about that stranding Hideo Kojima. You know, for me, uh, Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite, uh, Ken Levine. Like it's some person <laughs> that has this strong emotional connection uh, to actually do and tell this story and kind of like just blow people's minds. Like I honestly was blown away by the end of Bioshock Infinite as well as Bioshock, but mm -hmm. Infinite was like, oh my God. And then you look at the ramifications of certain decisions during the game and you're like, was that even my decision to make? It, it's just, it's just really wild. You and I had very different experiences with the, the end of Bioshock Infinite. Really? I yelled. Oh, see. I I gave out a nice loud resounding what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> oh, see, um, I thought it was really good because I saw where he was coming from and I thought it was insane. Yeah, no, I, I mean I got it. I understood it. I was just like, why? But all right, we we are approaching my usual cutoff time. So as much as I'm actually loving this conversation, because I'm getting a little off topic, uh, <laughs> no, it's okay. Because this this was probably one of the best conversations we've had. Um, all right, let's move on. Unfortunately, one of these subjects are probably going to have to get cut. Uh, but uh, moving on, Mortal Kombat One. Uh, Chaos Reigns and Combat Pack 2. So they announced what I believe September 24th, we are getting a story expansion that's going to uh, add on to the story with that little stinger scene we got at the end of Titan Havoc. And now we are seeing the Council of Havocs all with Titan powers from all from different timelines are just going to come in and just wreck house. Um, that I'm very much looking forward to. Combat Pack 2, however, is an entirely different story. Um, we are seeing the return of three beloved characters. One is Noob Saibot. The other will be Sector and Cyrax. However, not as we remember them as the cyborg ninjas, but as female ninjas in what are basically Sector and Cyrax Iron Man suits. And then we get to the guest characters, which, having heard Ed Boon's explanation, it makes a little more sense, but does not make the roster any less what the fucky. Ghostface from Scream, the T1000 from uh, Terminator 2. That's cool. And Conan the Barbarian. Which one? What do you mean, which one? Schwarzenegger or Momoa? Schwarzenegger. Thank Schwarzenegger. You. I have to check. Oh, okay. <laughs> I gotta know. Honestly, I wouldn't have minded Momoa. It's probably gonna be a skin. No, it's a 
Well, maybe. DLC characters don't tend to get skins, unfortunately, in MK1. You like, they know. get a couple, but none of the guest characters have gotten anything. You never know. I mean, if the price is right, I'm sure it can happen. Okay. But, yeah. Everyone's thoughts. Because I looked at that combat pack and just went, huh? <laughs> so, me personally, and I'm not actually playing MK at the moment. Uh, me personally, like, I like the idea of Ghostface and T-1000. Like, when I look at Ghostface, I just think this is a character that's like, probably long overdue to be in a game like Mortal Kombat because you see the likes of Jason, you see the likes of Freddy, you see the, you know, characters like that. It's just like, why wouldn't he be in the game? You know, it's, because it's, those two were of the supernatural assortment. This is dude with <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're right. He, he has no, like, he's actually just totally normal. But then again, Rambo was also normal too. And he was in the game. So I'm, still confused by that one but it at least fit the theme of what they were doing yeah you know of course he was more soldiery and stuff and much more of a formidable fighter at in any right than ghostface but now that you mention it yeah man like he doesn't yeah nah I'm not gonna lie. Dude with knife. Yeah. Dude with knife yes dude with knife. <laughs> okay. voice modulator he has that Oh, so okay, dude with knife with spirit Halloween voice box. Oh, oh yeah. well, also too, as you're fighting him, there'd be another him. That's the like okay, so that's the only thing I could think that they could maybe do is kind of do like Johnny Cage stunt double with him. Mm -hmm. Where Johnny Cage and like MKX and MK11, he had moves where his stunt double would literally come out and like grab you. And you could tell like, okay, it's a stunt double because the hair is different. The, uh, the cage tattoo on his chest is written in Sharpie marker. So like you could definitely do something like that because yeah, in the screen movies, there was usually more than just one guy in the costume. You could definitely do something like that. But like, how do you differentiate him from like, okay, he's got a knife. He may have a gun. Possibly a shotgun. Yeah, maybe a shotgun. It's like, okay, you're you're retreading waters you've already done. And like one of the big things of Mortal Kombat is the creativity because Ed doesn't like to rehash moves. He doesn't like doing that. Yes, Fudge. Now hear me out. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Scary Movie? Of course. The first two, yes. The first one specifically. Yeah, because they, they heavily spoof Scream in the first one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you remember the scene when they're in the basement and they're all, you know, smoking up and having a party and all that? Oh, yeah. And then, you know, they, they start they freestyling, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the character in the Scream mask starts just, you know, emoting with a knife in his hand while he's going off. I'm just saying that better be a fatality. <laughs> <laughs> So but, like, that's the thing. You've, you've got the opportunity to make a character with a short melee weapon doing very quick, you know, up close attacks, whereas range would be more of a limitation. Like, I know in Mortal Kombat, you need a good balance of both to be mostly viable. Well, but, yeah, uh, like Lethal even just said it, like, how yeah. would you differentiate him from Smoke? Because Smoke right now in the game is dude with a knife. Dude with yeah. a knife. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say the second character, T one thousand. Honestly, in my opinion, I think that's such a cool addition. Yeah, I thought there's the potential to do something absolutely great with him. Yes, yeah. so beefy and slow. He could melt yeah. down to the ground, come back up as the person you're playing. Wouldn't that be well? The see, there's that? there's kind of a double thing with the T one thousand. There has been I don't remember if he's fan made or not, but um, I'm pretty sure he is. There has been a fan-made ninja that has been campaigned and petitioned to make official in the Mortal Kombat universe for a long, long time. And his the ninja's name was Chrome. Chrome? And Chrome uh... was basically, he pretty much acted like the T-1000, like liquid metal, doing all that type of stuff. So, like, you do have the potential 
to make something great out of the T-1000 just based off that one character. Conan, I'm honestly going to throw away as, like, he's he's going to be the next Kotal Khan. Just big, beefy sword, big, burly bruiser guy. Like, seems pretty cut and dry. It's just really weird when you have something like, okay, the first combat pack was Omni-Man, Homelander, Peacemaker. Mm. They all kind of fit a moniker, like dickhead, superhero, anti-hero type of deal. Yeah. And then you just have these three that just don't fit a moniker at all. <laughs> yeah, like I, like, I don't know. Like, I, I heard all of the different, you know, talks about the combat pack, and I'm just like, well, let me see what's going on. I didn't necessarily recognize Sector and uh, Cyrax at first, obviously, because I'm just like, wait, is that Sector and Cyrax? Are, are they women? Are they in mech suits like I'm, I'm you know i was confused but the just the t1000 just literally wowed me from the start i was like no way and i hope he's voice although it might be very difficult it is right? robert he is patrick. Voiced by robert patrick they have already confirmed that uh see i don't know man i, I i'm gonna have to i'm gonna I, I i think that's sick i think that's very very sick especially with the momentum of seeing the terminator in uh, the last game and just how well you know they fit and I think that that's one thing that's cool about Mortal Kombat is you can take very obnoxious characters like that, sick villains, and just put them in a game like Mortal Kombat. So I think he's a good uh, addition. Um, I don't know. Ghostface, after you just said dude with a knife, I'm just like, <laughs> that just ruined the, I can't unsee it now. I'm just like, why is he here? Yeah. <laughs> I have I have this sneaking suspicion that they're going to make the T-1000 play very much like Sub-Zero. Honestly, I see some similarities, yeah. I wouldn't be too surprised with that. But nothing that can be done about it now other than just wait until they come out. But one question before we move on from this subject. If you could pick any three characters to put into Mortal Kombat as guest characters instead of these three, who would it be? Porter, go. Uh, Chucky. Huge okay. fan of Chucky. I'd like to see that, especially with how small Chucky is. Uh, I think that would be a pretty hitboxes. bizarre. What? The hitboxes would be obnoxious. I, yeah, I, I know, know I know, know but uh, over again. I, I'd love to see Chucky in there. Um, I would say... Ooh. Have they had Neo recently? Um, Neo, they said uh, straight up they would never put him in Mortal Kombat, that they would uh, rather have him in Injustice. Interesting. Okay, because I thought he would have been a lot of fun to play. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, let's see. Hmm. I'm trying to think who the third one would be. Um, Dexter. Dexter Morgan? Yeah. That'd be an interesting choice. So another dude with a knife. <laughs> yeah. yeah but <laughs> dude with a knife. I will say this. I will say this. His fatality would be absolutely fire. Yeah. The fatality is him just executing you with the pulling wrap. Like, that would be amazing. And then he put the plastic down and all that. You know, you'd get mm -hmm. all of it. Yeah. His, his winning screen after doing that is him just dropping the trash bags off in the bay. Also, too, he wouldn't just talk. You'd also get his inner monologue at times. That would actually be hilarious, especially if the inner monologue started going off mid-match. Like he just gets like he gets hit and he just starts talking for twenty seconds during the match. Uh, that would be so funny. Uh, Lionheart, who would skip you me? Skip me for now. Okay. I'm thinking. Now I will say this: I will allow you to use characters that have already appeared. Oh. Fudge, you're up. Okay, so I've only got two. I'm still thinking about a third right now. Uh, give me Mads Mikkelsen's portrayal of Hannibal Lecter. Oh! Ooh. Okay. Okay, uh, complete with the fatality where you sit someone down to dinner and feed them, uh, you know, somebody. Full Eddie Izzard? Uh, yeah, uh, very much so. Give me... Ooh, give me Christian Bale from American Psycho. 
Oh, okay. Chainsaw, yeah. knives. Oh, that'd be nice. Chainsaw. That was a fire axe, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's talking about when he chased the girl out of the apartment. Oh, you know what? You're right. Yeah, yeah. it's true. But that's that's not the scene that everybody thinks of, though. Um, no, everybody and, thinks of him just cleaving Jared Leto in half. I mean, best scene of the whole movie. You? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Oh, you know what? You know, oh, Darth Man would be amazing. That would be wild. Uh, give Actually, me yes. also uh, the Zodiac Killer, but he has to look like Ted Cruz. He thinks he's so clever right now. No, I'm, <laughs> being, <laughs> I'm being completely serious. Okay, the Zodiac Killer would be a good pull. Ryan. Okay. My first one is going to be uh, Jason, but from Jason X Ooh. after he gets off the table with the armor. Ooh. Um, this fatality has to be that he puts you in a sleeping bag and beat and beats the dog shit out of you. They actually yeah. have it in multiverses, the skin and that fatality. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, second one, I don't know how well this is going to fit, but I was thinking uh, Matilda from Darkness Falls. I don't oh, know if y'all watched that movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be gross. Yeah. The thing is, I don't know how well that's going to work is because she flies. Uh, and she's Homelander. Okay. And she can't really operate in sunlight. There are stages with oh. sunlight. So I don't know how well that's going to work. It's kind of just a concept idea. As far as like a third character, I'm I can't really think of one right now. Like that the the honestly with how Mortal Kombat is, especially with what it's turning into nowadays, the possibilities are endless. And I just feel like I, there's so many movies I'm going through that I've watched or that I just know of, and I'm just like, bro, I can't even settle on a third. So I would I would just go with those two for now. Can I give you two honorable mentions? Sure. Sure. Literally any ghost from 13 Ghosts. I was thinking about that movie. Literally any of the ghosts. You could do an entire combat pack with just the ghosts. And there'd be something in there for everybody. The dude with the hammer. Yep. The, the and, hammer. Yeah. And... Michael. There you go. Yeah. Like, even just those two. Would be insane. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. Well, Obi Obi mentioned one of mine because that was supposed to happen in MK11, and he reneged on the deal. Oh, what Bruce Campbell <laughs> pulling out from being Ash for it? Yeah, like they already had advertisement and everything yep. ready for it in one of the trailers, and then they pulled out because Evil Dead the game was getting ready to drop. Oh, like, that is so fucking lame that would have just done more money for them honestly it really would have yeah mm -hmm. so yeah ash would have definitely be one any of the demons from the insidious movie franchise no yeah the red man nah what? yeah baby yeah the red man and the nun or the old lady Oof. but how is that gonna work they've never like they don't really like fight they just haunt if that you want to go with that, that red you, man was a straight up physical demon. He don't. He, he was don't physical, no... but he didn't like. Did he hurt like physically hurt people? Like fight them? No. Fight? No. Hurt? Yes. Uh, okay. So in that case, would you also consider La Jarona from uh, uh, The Exorcist? Happened twenty ish nineteen, I think. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. All right. So can to continue on with mine, Ash from Evil Dead, obviously, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, if I had to pick a returning character, I would do Kratos, but 2018 Kratos. Oh. Chucky, I wouldn't make main roster, but I would make Chucky a cameo. Oh, okay. 100%. <laughs> I would definitely do that. Well, what, um, was the, what was the name of the actress who played his bride before she turned into a doll? Jennifer Tilly? Yeah. yeah. Put her character in there as the fighter and have him like hop off her shoulder. Oh, and give kind it, of do like a Farrakhor thing with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Ah. 
Yeah. So Chucky is like the little Farah, and then Jennifer Tilly is Tor. <laughs> she just throws Chucky as a move. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That I mean, like I can't say no to that because they've done something like that before. Yeah. So she throws Chucky. Work. He comes flying at you with a knife, stabs you up a bunch of times, jumps back on his shoulder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They could definitely do that because yeah. Farah Tor had a move just like that. Um. Oh, Barbarian. Has anyone seen that movie? No. Whoa, that, wait. Yes. That monster would be in freaking sane. It's also huge. Yes. But yeah, no, I can see it. Third character. If I had to pick somebody who hadn't been in the game before, I really, really like Xbox Live's uh, Mike's response of either Darkman or if we're going full horror, Pumpkinhead. I love the idea of Darkman because one of the things he could do is take the bandages off and have the person's face that he's fighting. And that could like maybe freak them out or shock them so you get in an attack maybe. Or you get a few seconds of mimicking their moves. He also can like do the like crazy repel that, stuff like, like Batman it. almost and things like that. There's there's a cool physicality to the character. Also, uh, you would be able to take a little bit more pu- uh, punishment than other characters possibly because he had no nerves. So you could give him an armored move just like they did with Jason in the Terminator where he just gets instant. He still takes the damage. But he doesn't feel it, so it's armored. He just keeps walking. Uh, that would work. Emotep from the Mummy. Ooh, would be oh. cool. Or Benny. Shredder. Shredder. Honestly, I would rather see Shredder in Injustice. I'm not going to front there. I have we my already third. got the Ninja Turtles in Injustice. I have my third. Okay. Brightburn. The kid. Yes. Never pass but... the SRB. <coughs> All right. It would never pass the yeah, ESRB. You already have Homelander, so how did you differentiate? So they get an AO rating immediately. Yeah, he yeah. wouldn't really differentiate from Homelander much. The See, thing I don't is, know about the AO thing a fudge I, simply because Farah is currently a cameo in Mortal Kombat One. Farah is canonically a child, mm-hmm. and she enters the arena on a sack of heads. But if you do gratuitous violence to a child, the ESRB takes exception to that. Okay, the worst you could do is hit her. So they, they almost knocked Fallout 4 for having a kid trapped in a fridge. For okay, fair enough. Which 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 leads me to my next thing. A lot of the people who watched Brightburn, you know, they considered, you know, the continuation. You know, like after the movie finishes, he just like goes on a rampage or whatever, and they're just thinking, Wow, what what do you think he would be if he like grew up? And it's just like, oh, he would just be this young evil Superman. And I think that that would be a good thing, but Jay did bring up a good point. He would not really differentiate much from Homelander. They would be the exact same two psychopaths doing the same exact things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it'd be an interesting thing because that, that that movie and Chronicle, which were supposed to be either in the same universe or just adjacent. Wasn't Super also part of that universe, jokingly? Uh, I think so. Yeah, the Crimson Bolt or whatever. (laughs) But none of them ever got a follow-up. Chronicle yeah. was supposed to have a sequel, never happened. Um, they're still wishy-washy on whether or not they're giving one to Brightburn. And Super was all that Super needed to be. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of felt that that was a one and done. I, I, I liked it. I didn't love it, though, because, like, everyone... I love James Gunn, but, like, everyone was going on and on about how amazing Super was, and I liked it. I just didn't love it. Yeah. Yeah, I would go along with that. I have another really wacky one. I know this is overstepping a little bit. So hear me out. You saw Shuma Gorav in MVC2. So things like that can kind of work in a game. Sure. Calvin from Life. That one's over my head. Hold on. Movie Life. They get the sample from Mars. comes back. Oh, they throw yeah, it in the yeah, lab. Yeah, the, and the it little turns, tentacle thing. It's like a tentacle kind of. It feeds on the crew and then it starts evolving in the ship. Starts growing a face. Starts. It has a. It's all brain, all eye, all muscle. It can survive in space, but only for a little bit. And it crash lands to Earth at the end of the movie. And it's speculated, hey, like it's going to turn into something crazy. Like the sky's yeah. the limit with it. Yeah. Imagine it in a way like kind of like Shumagorath, where it's like a you know a squid in the game. 
you know, it could it could be a nice touch. It could be a little wacky thing. It could be something different. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Just whip out the old Universal monsters. Honestly, I wouldn't say no at this point. I would love that actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your Frankenstein, your mummy, you know, Wolfman. Yeah. I mean, I'm down for Emotep. I think Emotep, like, Emotep uh, I'll take Emotep over Aminet for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But all right, we are over time, so we are going to need to cut one of the topics. Uh, all in favor of cutting the next one down, which would be Deadpool, simply because Ryan has not seen it yet. And we can just save that for the next episode and we can go full spoiler. Skip sure, it. that sounds good. Okay, yeah. let's do that then. All right, so last subject of the night is the MCU blows the roof off a of Comic-Con. How the fuck they going to put Robert <laughs> 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 No, I've been, I've been holding this. I'm I, know, this. I know. Let it, let it go. Let it okay. go. Okay. Okay. You had options, okay? People were, like, yelling for Cillian Murphy and for, like, or excuse me, Killian Murphy, however the hell it's pronounced. Yeah. Killian, all right, yeah. Killian Murphy, Mads Mickelson, both amazing options with Doctor Doom. Ooh. And instead they turned around with this multiverse nonsense for Doom and we're like, hey, you remember that one universe where Tony Stark was Doctor Doom? Let's do that shit. Like, <laughs> like Robert Downey Jr.'s face is one of the most recognizable faces in the movie industry simply because of this franchise. And you're just going to shoehorn him back in after teasing bringing him back as Iron Man for how many years? And you're going to do that? Stupid. Wait. Uh, yeah. Something tells me they're going to do that with other characters, too. Yeah, I, like I, can't, I, can't, I can't say anything because we just we skipped the last topic. They did that already. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they done did it. Like, they did it. <laughs> Uh, my my thing with it is like I don't mind it because at the end of the day I go to a movie for one reason and one reason only to be entertained. Like we had this conversation on the weekly wrap up years ago when Michael B. Jordan wanted to be Superman. Yeah, I I don't care if he's would not Superman. care as long as the movie is good. I just I don't care. And the same thing with Robert Downey Jr. Yes, RDJ doesn't have to work another day in his life if he doesn't want to. He is set up for life, and Oppenheimer finally gave him the flowers he deserved. Me? If he wants to come back and be Dr. Doom, as long as the script is good, I'll bite. He's an actor. He's not Tony Stark. <laughs> no, nah, but it's just, it's really kind of, unless they're doing something that has to do with the multiverse theory, like using your flagship actor, because that's basically what he was. Mm -hmm. for that franchise as a villain down the pipe seems like maybe not a great choice. I think we're going to get the Doom that we want in Fantastic Four. Like, I think there's going to be multiple Dooms. I think that... You're right, uh, almost definitely, but like, you know. I think it might be um, a bit of a, a turn because recently I know I know Hoarder read it and I, I read some of it and what I did read of it was pretty good is they had this whole arc where Victor Von Doom was Iron Man. Yeah. It was known as the infamous Iron Man. And mm -hmm. like I could definitely see them spinning that to a point. But being that the next two Avengers films, like okay, Doomsday and then right off that heel is Secret Wars, which was a big ass multiverse fight but they've so, done secret wars already they're doing the actual secret wars <laughs> oh, are they yes are they calling it something not secret wars we no, got oh, just secret wars. wars because they made a tv show called secret wars avengers doomsday and avengers or just uh secret wars after that yeah this was this was all what it was announced yesterday i believe boy yeah During the hall age presentation at comic-con Oh, yeah. And it kind of sounds like they've uh, scrapped or they're altering the Kang story arc then, right? Yeah, it looks like they're getting mm. rid of that completely, which I think um, I saw a tweet from Caboose that how they explained it at the end of Loki season two kind of just properly writes Kang off that the TVA has kind of been kind of taking care of him in the background mm -hmm. with how Loki season two mm -hmm. ended. And I mean, if that's how you want to do it, that's, that's perfectly fine with me. I still think um, they could have recast someone awesome, but yeah, I think they could have definitely recast someone, but knowing Disney, 
they probably just want to stay as far away from that as humanly possible. Oh, they totally went with Colin Domingo. Uh, the name of the series fudge was Secret Invasion. Oh, is it Secret Invasion? My apologies. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. Thank you, Mike. Mike. The, uh, the, also, the inclusion of Juan Carlos Esposito as Sidewinder seemed like an interesting choice, given that he'd been vying for the newly acquired available role of Professor Xavier. Yeah. So it makes me wonder what with them planning to lean more heavily into the mutant factor of things, where they're going to go with that kind of casting. Well. Because Patrick Stewart's a little long in the tooth. Yeah, and so is James McAvoy, if you really want to get down to it. Yeah. Um, I think with the subject that we unfortunately skipped over, um, I think that situation alone was just kind of the send-off for everyone that was ever remotely involved with that. And now that they are incorporating them into the MCU, um, it's going to be just all new faces. Mm-hmm. Although I will say, and this is literally the only thing I will say, one cameo in particular, my God, I would welcome him with open arms if you know <laughs> who I'm talking about. I know who you're talking about. Yes. I do. God. I think. That would be incredible. <laughs> you're talking about the last one with the purple thing. I'm talking about the one with the bike. Oh, that one. That one. That one. Yeah, no, that'd yes. be good. Yeah, that'd be good. Yes, I would happily accept that. <laughs> no, that'd be that'd be real good. Total package, even. Yeah. Wink, no, wink. No, it's, uh, it'd be good. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Avengers was not the only thing announced. I do believe we got a ironclad title for Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four first steps yes and this will be a themed piece taking place in a pseudo futuristic 1960s yes pretty much solidifying the fantastic four as the first super family and i think that is very neat mm -hmm. and then from there what i don't remember hearing a bunch about thunderbolts did they touch on thunderbolts like i know they touched on it but did they say anything significant order well, the biggest thing was kind of like uh, Harbor coming out in a full outfit, making a joke, hey, why didn't you all dress up? So I thought yeah. that was pretty funny. <laughs> um, but no, I didn't catch anything that was uh, completely different. Oh, uh, the name of the, mo uh, the movie Thunderbolts has an asterisk, and the these Thunderbolts were not named by Thunderbolt Ross. So that name, his name, is not the reason they're called that here. I wonder if they're going to go with the whole thing of the Thunderbolts being originally formed by Baron Zemo. Maybe. Like we're going to wind up seeing him again. Maybe. Because, yeah, I, I love watching that actor. That guy's fantastic. Given that Bucky Barnes is supposed to be in it, I think you might have a bit of a problem with that. Because he's going to be one of the Thunderbolts. Yeah, and Bucky does eventually wind up leading the Thunderbolts. But mm -hmm. I think Supposedly. how they're doing it this time around is that, like... Uh, what Yelena? Yelena is going to be kind of leading the team this time, or uh, she's taking the Black Widow moniker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Supposedly, Bucky is a U.S. senator in the film. Oh, huh? Okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah, no. Okay, that's that's the thing that would pass a background check. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Barnes, it's time to do your. Computer. Nobody utter the word freight car. <laughs> Where have you been uh, for the past 20 years? Well, I was a mind-controlled assassin. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, also, as recently as like 10 years ago, I tried to kill uh, Iron Man uh, out of uh, control of my own body. <laughs> this guy named Baron Zemo. Yeah, no, that guy. Uh, the Avengers as well. Uh, successfully murdered the uh, Prime Minister of Wakanda. That was cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I'll definitely take job as senator. <laughs> You're going to jail yeah. now. <laughs> You're going to jail now. But uh, not only was Marvel coming out of the curtain swinging, so did DC uh, with the first reveal of the animated series of basically kind of the spiritual successor of Suicide Squad, Creature Commandos. 
Yes. And I can't help but kind of chuckle a little bit how we've seen the tables turn between Marvel and DC. Marvel was carefully, meticulously planning every little thing, and DC was just kind of scrambling to throw whatever they could out there. (laughs) And now we're kind of seeing the exact opposite, where James Gunn is over at DC just carefully poking and prodding every little thing, making sure it's right. And here comes DC. Here's the Russo brothers. Here's Robert Downey Jr. You like him, right? Well, wouldn't you know it? If anything, James Gunn seems to touch just makes money. Well, I mean, and, Gunn and a decent are. product. <laughs> so, I mean, why not? And we get uh, Viola Davis back, which is awesome. I'm a big oh, fan of Viola Davis God, fan. Yes. <laughs> and uh, also, uh, a Sean Gunn, of course, is Weasel. Frankenstein. <laughs> oh, Weasel. And then, uh, last but not least, we've got confirmation that Joel Kinnaman will be reprising his role as Colonel Rick Flag for season two, Peacemaker. I can't seem to help Just but keep anybody that. dead, right? <laughs> well, it could be flashbacks. It could be some crazies. Well, I get we can have spoilers for that, right? It's been enough time. I, I feel like yeah, we can talk about that. It could be some crazy cyborg thing. You know, uh, mm-hmm. Waller may just not be like, I'm not done with you because that's Waller and she's kind of monstrous. You're more useful to me a lot. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> or again, it could be flashbacks. We get, uh, You know, it's hard to say. Didn't he get like stabbed in the heart by a big ass shard of rock or something? Yeah, oh, yeah. It was, it, we, we thought he was dead. Yeah. And then didn't the building collapse? It's comic books, though. Comic books. Yeah. Comic books, baby. <laughs> Uh, to, to this day, to this day, uh, my favorite comic book line ever comes from none other than Wolverine dressing down Cyclops. I, I think it was actually in Avengers versus X-Men or it was like just before it where he said Jean would be spinning in her grave li- uh, right now if she would actually stay in there long enough. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. But you can literally take that one line and apply it to any comic book you want. For God's sakes, go ahead on a guess in all of comic book history who has died the most and come back. Hoarder, go. Oh my God. Uh, maybe Batman or. Well, I'm trying to be when Spider Man died specifically. Um, I'd say Batman. Final answer? Yeah. Wrong. Lion. Uh, died and come back a billion times. Uh, who just who who? Someone just did that from comics. Stop googling, Fudge. I already have my answer. <laughs> like I have what I'm going to say, and I have what I'm looking up. Okay. <laughs> Joker. Wrong. Fudge. Dead man. Wrong. Ah, Optimus Prime. Huh? Wait, well, you said superhero. Oh no, you said comic character. Didn't comic you? character. Uh, okay, I guess that's fair. Optimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, can count it. Died many up. times. Like, <laughs> what's Optimus' favorite thing to do? Sacrifice himself. Oh my God! There's a pileup on ninety five. I will absorb my soul into the spark and do. <laughs> 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 Uh, to answer the question about Spider-Man, it's nine times. Oh, really? Nine times? Holy uh, yeah, let's see. I have the ten most uh, dead characters in Marvel. Oh, let's hear it. <laughs> let's hear it. <laughs> At number ten, Professor Xavier, four times. Oh, Rogue, five times. Iron Spider- Man, five times. Thor, six times. The Wasp, oddly enough, seven times. Hmm. Hawkeye, also seven times. Wolverine, seven times. Hmm. Spider-Man, nine times. Captain America, 12 times. Wow. They don't actually give a number for Jean Grey. It just says innumerable. <laughs> <laughs> innumerable? Innumerable. <laughs> Uh, That's hilarious. The reason her death tally is impossible to calculate exactly is because during the X-Men Phoenix End Song miniseries, Wolverine killed her dozens of times in order to weaken the Phoenix Force. 
but it was forced to bring her back to life each and every time and eventually became weak enough for her to regain control. So he just kept stabbing her. Damn it, that's the case. Jean Grey may be the winner. <laughs> yeah, that's a wild story. Uh, how many times did Optimus Prime die? I can count at least since growing up a dozen times. Hold on. A dozen. Three times. Bullshit! Are we counting only one Optimus Prime or all of them? Hold on. In the Marvel Transformers comic books. Three times. He also died and was resurrected in the miniseries Transformers Animated and Transformers Prime. So that brings you up to five times. I'm genuinely shocked. What about the UK runs? Uh, it does not differentiate. Fuck. All right. <laughs> so Jean Grey is the winner, and Optimus Prime is damn near at the bottom of the top ten. I'm, I'm, I'll hold my <laughs> so L, but everyone's damn, I'm shocked. <laughs> well, see, I want to know how many times Dead Man has died, because that man just be dead. Boston Grand? Like already dead. <laughs> yeah, but you can still die. No, I'll tell you who's never died. And probably can't die. Plastic Man. Plastic He's Man? just cheating at life. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. It, same thing with... Uh, you know, actually, you know, I can't even say same thing as Hulk because Hulk was on that list. Yet there's a comic run where the Hulk is literally uh, alive while being separated into parts in different jars. Yes! Yeah. Immortal Hulk, an incredible run. So yeah, they did the same thing to Silver Surfer in one comic too, and actually auctioned off his parts. It's a body horror Hulk comic, and it is incredible. It's L. Ewing, I believe. Hold on, I think I may have found a different source for the deaths of Optimus Prime. Okay, the Transformers cartoon, Transformers the movie. Yeah, the movie. Yeah, that was the amazing. Transformers season three. The Headmasters, oh. Unite Warriors, Return of Convoy, Generation 2, and that's just in the cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> that may be where I got it from, the, not just the comics, like they were just killing him every other week in the uh, show. <laughs> now, in the comics, Generation 1, Generation 2, so that's 9. The Beast Wars cartoon wasn't technically him. No, was... that's Optimus Primal. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> but these some bitches are mixing that shit up. Okay, so you're at nine. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, nope, there it is again. <laughs> 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> So really quick, I do want to say, though, because it's San Diego Comic-Con, I just want to say the biggest comic news that came out, mm -hmm. a new JSA book is coming out, Justice Society of America, okay. by Ram V. And then this one's huge, though. Uh, Justice League Unlimited, Mark Wade, art by Dan Mora, and it's almost going to be an excuse for Dan Mora to draw every member of the Justice League, because at one point or another, they are going to be in the series, they said. Nice. That's pretty sick. So basically taking the book and acting just like the show where everybody's going to get a chance for the spotlight. I like it. I like it a lot. Hello, so, look. I still like have 17 like... 17 is the final number. 17 is the final number wow. for Optimus Prime. <laughs> I would put him at number two. <laughs> oh, wow. We, we took this so off the rails, but it's yeah. every second. <laughs> it was, it was it fun. It was. <laughs> All right, so yeah, it's 10.32. We are 32 minutes over my uh, usual runtime. I like to keep this at around two hours because I want to try and respect everybody's time. So we're going to go ahead and call it here. As always, thank you, my wonderful panel of friends and colleagues. Uh, you, before we go, Fudge, why don't you put yourself on the map and let people know where they can find you? Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Fudge Grande. And that's about it. <laughs> All right, we'll see you backstage. No, I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> All right, Ryan, let us know where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on uh, X at uh, True underscore Lionheart. You can find me on Twitch at True Lionheart uh, with a zero. And yeah, that'll pretty much be it. 
All right. And I uh, will see you backstage. All right. Yeah, that, that definitely went off the rails a little bit, but you know what? It was worth it. It was a very fun time of going off the rails. Yeah. Uh, I, I love having Fudge on because, like, he can, he definitely has the ability to liven up some conversations. And I, I think we had some of the best conversations ever so far since doing this podcast. So, definitely going to have him on again later on. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. But as always, put yourself on the map, sir. So, uh, twitch.tv backslash hoarder gamer. Uh, basically, right now, I'm doing a lot of the first descendant. Uh, very much looking forward to um, the Star Wars game, but that's like end of August. So, that's a while away. Uh, and uh, let's see. Also, here's something real big uh, Wednesdays. Hoarders Comic Flex. That's on the Hoarder Gamer YouTube channel. Uh, reviews, toys, and uh, video game news. So definitely check that out. 8 p.m. Central on Wednesday nights. Uh, Alrighty, and I will see you backstage. Bye bye. And of course, as I always say, if you're watching right now, you already know where to find me. But thank you very much to everybody who come in uh, and hung out with us tonight. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, personally, I do apologize for not uh, streaming for the past few days. Things in real life have just been very hectic. Uh, I have been trying to get some videos out for you guys uh, in the meantime. But uh, streams will be returning starting tomorrow. And uh, we will be... Not fully sure what I'm going to do yet. Probably leaning towards Mortal Kombat, but we are approaching the beginning of the Summer Series Marathon, a thing that we do every single year, and I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I will be sure to put a link to uh, where you can vote for what series is going to be played, I think, right now, between online and offline votes. Uh, Kingdom Hearts is ahead by one, with Devil May Cry in Castlevania picking up from behind and then uh, the stragglers in the back are Metroid Metal Gear and uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. So if you want to know what's going to be played or you want to influence what's going to be played on the channel very, very soon, be sure to click that link and vote for what you want to see. Thank you everyone for watching and we will see you guys on the next episode. Take care.